Hello, Internet, and welcome to Red Jenny. We are back playing some Dragon Age, uh, and we're so excited to have you here joining us. Uh, welcome. We're going to get started with our game here in a minute, but first, before we get going, uh, usual announcements, uh, what we're doing on the channel this week. Uh, I believe our next regularly scheduled stream for this week would have been Neon Souls. Uh, however, we are uh, not going to be able to uh, do that this week. I got roped into an after work event. It sucks. But anyway, uh, we're going to be either rescheduling or picking back up on the 1st of June. Um, but we will uh, we'll keep you updated in our Discord or if uh, when if we're able to reschedule. Um, I believe then that makes our next stream Saturday for Strixhaven, returning with the Queer Chronicles of the Strixhaven Quartet, uh, doing some uh, some D and D. Uh, the uh, we're, we're doing some Candlekeep mysteries. I'll let Van talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and yeah, if you want to know all the other games we do on this channel, uh, you can check out the full lineup of shows and our schedule below our faces if you're watching us live on Twitch. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube some point in the future, thank you, uh, for the, for the, for the views, uh, but head over to our Twitch page and see whatever we're doing right now. Um, because who knows what that might be. Uh, I think that's it. For now, so I'm going to go ahead and let my lovely players here introduce themselves, talk about who they are, what they do on and off this channel, and who they are playing tonight, starting with Van. That's me. Hi, I'm Van. You can find me on the internet at Van, but Wilder, pretty much wherever you can find people on the internet, mostly. I'm hanging out in the Discord and streaming on Twitch several times a week. Um, I am on twitch.tv slash hack recklessly on Sunday nights playing Dungeons and Dragons, uh, playing in several games and then running D&D &D 5e uh, on this channel most Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Yeah, we're doing uh, some of the high level Candlekeep mysteries right now, and they're very fun and exciting. Um, lots of fun monsters that I like very much. Anyway, um, those should be up on YouTube soon, so you can go go watch them there we just start a brand new season it's coming out um tonight i am playing venon uh who is an elven marksman and whose favorite classic horror villain has just gotta be freddy it's gotta be freddy krueger it's freddy krueger love it uh, hey, hey, I'm Christina Sid. You can find me on the internet at Greek Sid. I'm here on Mondays and Saturdays. Uh, uh, this evening, I am playing Yasmira. She is our Kunari Shadow. And uh, I think she's a fan of Pinhead. Mainly, mainly because of the big, the big turn of oh, innocuous fox. No, I oh, will eat your soul. I would have so, bet a um, thousand actual dollars that you were gonna say pinhead. <laughs> it just seems deep down in my yeah, deep down in my mind, like no, Yasmir, you know Yasmir loves pinhead. some Hellraiser. Yeah. Oh hell yeah! It's black leather. Absolutely. It's cool. It's mm -hmm. vaguely painful. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. It's, it's like her brand. Yeah. It's just living with the cues right there. Is. <laughs> That's her. That's it right there. That's Yasmira's actual quest line. Yeah. Yeah. The lament configuration. <laughs> what the fuck do I do with this box? Hey, that's me. Oh, oops, that's me. Sup, y'all? It's me, Wally, your favorite non-binary sign, best friend on the internet. You can find me on the social medias at W A L E one three two, just like the cute little dizzy robot. Check me out. Find out the cool stuff that I'm doing, cause I'm gonna be doing a lot of cool things in the future. But you can also check me out here Mondays and saturdays playing games with all these wonderful people but today i am playing garris our elven gray warden duelist whose favorite um classic movie classic horror movie villain um i think it's yeah he loves him some charles lee ray he loves some chucky garris loves some chucky he loves a villain that's like like is you cracking wise you stab, and you're fueled by vengeance. Oh, let's go. That little shit energy. Yeah, a little shit energy. That's all Garrus right there. He loves that little shit energy. I was 50-50 if you were going to pick Chucky or Leprechaun. 
here's a fun fact. I was thinking probably Leprechaun, but I was like, no, Chucky. Because it's the only reason why he doesn't like Leprechaun is because uh, Leprechaun of the Hood really pissed him off. Leprechaun's so, nasty. <laughs> Leprechaun of the Hood pissed him off as a movie, so that's... As, I mean, it should. It should. It really Fair. should. Ice, -T pulled, Ice Cube pulled a, a weapon out of his afro in that movie. Don't slander Ice T like that. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't put him in there. He didn't do it. He did it for money. <laughs> That's me. All right. Uh, hi, Internet. Hi, Mom. Uh, it's me. It's Zeta. I'm back again. Um, and before I start, I want to give an extra special shout out to Van today as uh, they're the, the person who is in charge of posting all of these videos from Twitch onto YouTube. And I want to tell you and let the, the, the whole of the Internet know how important it is for me and for my mom that you do that. Because it's really great that, you know, I'm, I've been playing D&D &D and stuff like that for. I don't want to do that math. I was um, about to say, I was like, do you want to uh, go there? Do you really uh, want to go so, there? So, uh, and, and, you know, like when I first started off, mom and I, we didn't have that kind of uh, bond or communication about it. And now we do. And it's really awesome. So thank you. Uh, I'd like to apologize to your mom if sometimes the videos are a couple weeks late. I work full time. I'm sure Sorry, she Mom. understands. She just loves that they keep coming I'll get out. Them up there. Um, but yeah, all right, let me quit stalling. Uh, you can find me on the internet at uh, Mr. Wilt. Uh, that's M R underscore W Y L D T, uh, or John at an Instagram account that I haven't posted that in so long that I had to re download Instagram onto my phone because I got a new phone like a year ago and haven't posted since. <laughs> um, but I might again one day, so go check it out. Uh, but really, you can find me lurking around in the Discord uh, uh, or in the chats, uh, especially for the games on Saturday. I love some. Um, so come join us there. Tonight, I am playing one Zygmunt Angharad, also known as Ziggy, uh, the Dwarven uh, Guardian, Grey Warden Guardian. Uh, and I think um, to continue my, uh, my trend of tending to subvert these bits a little bit, I think Ziggy totally misunderstood the question. Uh, and so when you said, because I did too, <laughs> so when you said classic horror monster, I was like, oh, Frankenstein, like totally. And I think that that is so what his favorite horror movie villain is, is, is Frankenstein. And and he got very confused by everything that you guys were talking about. Like, oh, what, what are these shows? He's just older. I, I mean, that is the most, that's one of the most classic. No, I was going to yeah. say, don't say the. Dracula is the evil. yeah 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 but no yeah. but this this not, was because Invisible fucking... Man before Dracula though uh, uh, Invisible Man was I don't think so. like the horror movie like the Warner Brothers God horror movie like three. classic um, Invisible Man was thirty three yeah and were you asking Dracula or Frank because I think Dracula was earlier oh Dracula was nineteen thirty one so Dracula, Dracula came out first was two years before okay. Yeah. So Dracula kicked it all off, and then Frankenstein also thirty one. Those came out the same year. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. And Those, those years are all a blur year. for me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the war, right? The invisible <laughs> Nosferatu is... came out in twenty two, though. Oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah. Though also Nosferatu is like the first, like, hey, we're not really this monster, but was you, it that played Dracula? Hard enough? Was that Basil Rathbone as Nosferatu? No, as Dracula. Oh no, Bella Lugosi was Dracula. Bella Lugosi. Yeah. Who am I thinking of? Anyway, <laughs> was that a free seat? Yeah, that'll do it. Keep uh, us on the rails, Val. Hi, Ron. What I'm Val. You... Sorry. I don't know. That was <laughs> cool name. Uh, hi, Ron. I'm Val. You can find me the Kraken's Crown lurking around the internet. Uh, I am here. Uh, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm here a few days a week playing and running games. I run three games on this channel currently. This one that you are watching right now, uh, as well as Neon Souls Season 4. We play Star Wars 5e every other Wednesday. And then Saturdays, I run uh, Hearts of Stone. We play Blades in the Dark. Um, otherwise, I'm also over on Hack Recklessly on Sundays, uh, playing, in, playing some D&D over there. Uh, and... I'm not going to give one for all of my people, but I, I was going to say Marquis Valmonts. I don't I know if you can. I don't Did know if you consider this, this horror movie sleepover. a horror movie. This is the first thing that jumped in my head. I don't know if you consider this a classic, 
like it's not really horror it's more like thriller like sorry but i was immediately jumped to my mind of patrick bateman um he so. would oh. <laughs> i consider that horror yeah, yeah. But there yeah. were already a ton of red flags with the marquee but yeah that's that's, that's the first but like i was like See, that's I gotta you be were gonna go like he's the, like no the listen Hannibal it's really route. complicated I he's actually you... uh it's an allegory oh. for the struggle you've got to actually like yeah. empathize with him you, <laughs> you know who you... i bet he likes who the Tooth Fairy as played by Rafe Fiennes and fucking... What's the one where he's got the big back tattoo? Oh, oh uh, uh, Red Dragon. Red, Red Dragon. Dragon. Yeah. yeah, I bet that's I, who he likes. Va Va Valmont seems like the type of person who has a picture of Bojack Horseman, Rick Sanchez, <laughs> And Patrick Bateman, and it says three icons I want to be like. He takes We're gonna do our next season of Red Jenny is gonna be an AU college universe with all <laughs> yes! these characters. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> and Marquis Valmont is gonna be. <laughs> I'm. Correct. That is a. I'm counting that as a fucking promise. <laughs> I'm holding you one shot. to that. I don't know if I would do a full. I would totally do a one shot. Another hundred episodes. No way. <laughs> I, would t I would totally do a one shot Have with these characters that? in college. Uh, uh, Red, Red Dragon. Dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Dragon, yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Do you know they show Ray finds whole butt in that? Oh, movie? his whole, mm -hmm. his whole butt. Whole butt. Whole that. buddy crack. His whole yeah. booty. Whole yeah. booty I like crack. that movie. And that's what I took away from it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a pretty good movie. Uh, that, Blurred those movies, rising. that movie blurs really heavily in with the TV show for me, though, uh, because it was a very weird timing of release. Well, because I mean, they came out like a long time. Like the Red Dragon came out way before Red Hannibal, Dragon's the old. show was, yeah, yeah. but they followed it so closely it in the, the TV show. It felt that, like it, yeah. That that like series, that sequence of like season two or whatever was like it just like blends yeah, my mind. No, like, oh, I forgot first, first lines. The first actor to play Will Graham on screen is the same guy who played Gil Grissom in CSI. I did not. Same no. guy. Oh. Can't anyway. for the life of me remember his name, but it's the same yeah, guy. Either. Uh and as soon our... as you see his face, you're like, oh, it's a fucking CSI guy. Yeah. He was also the dad in Fear. There you go. Go. What a Talented actor. Good job. You should play you. this game. Uh hope you're not a shit bag. I'm gonna go <laughs> ahead and move, just push us right into the Like Marky Valmont, am I right? Am I right? Oh, go, transition. All right. Previously on Red Jenny, uh, your crew had been invited to a uh, to a to a wicked game, wicked grace tournament uh, hosted by one of your crew's arch nemeses, if not all of your arch nemesis at this point, uh, uh, Marquis Valmont. Uh, you had done you did a little so, a little bit of prep work, planning for Yasmir to sort of take the lead as the face of your business, while the rest of you would kind of pose as attendees or bodyguards or just friends, uh, invited backers, uh, investors in the Red Jenny here to uh, uh, have a good time. Um, you arrived at the uh, Sweet Song Brandy Parlor uh, and saw many familiar faces among the crowd. Uh, some which you did not know, but may have heard of in kind of high society from in Val Royale. Uh, but amongst the crowd, uh, much uh, to your dismay, uh, you saw uh, not only the Marquis Valmont, but his uh, invitees, uh, Lady Richelieu, uh, as well as Lord Reyes Hanover, uh, both of which uh, you recognize immediately on sight, uh, and maybe a little bit more pleased to see Duke Fontaine <laughs> in the tournament as well, somebody we had not seen in a long time. Um, you quickly kind of reconvened, came up with your plan, decided to move forward as uh, intended, hoping that your disguises would help to keep you uh, keep your attendance there under wraps. Um, the tournament began after a short uh, speech from uh, Marquis Valmont uh, welcoming his attendees. Uh, and uh, we began with the first rounds, the first hands of this Wicked Grace tournament. Uh, of course, as we said, Yasmira uh, kind of heading the efforts or, or the one playing for your group uh, did very well in the first rounds. Uh, 
making out with a, a sizable uh, uh, pot uh, at the by the end of it, uh, setting herself in a very good place for the rest of the tournament. Unfortunately, along with Lady Beatrice Lamere, the owner of uh, a prominent shipping company here in Valrio, and Dokken Galno, your Carta leader friend, who you also uh, got to see the first time, uh, Duke Fontaine was also eliminated from the from the tournament fairly quickly. It was the first one out. Uh, I think he went all in on the first hand uh, and had absolute dog shit to show for it. Um, the uh, round ended and we got a little bit of uh, time for y'all to do a little bit of socializing and probably and plant some seeds to maybe help you in the uh, rounds to come or the next uh, round uh, hands to come. Uh, Garrus specifically uh, inter ingratiated himself uh, with Roland Maldonado, a Ferelden merchant and close friend of Marquis Valmont. Uh, you had uh, sort of what was it? I forgot what your plot, what your ploy was there. You were essentially trying to. Uh, oh yeah, you were stroking his ego a bit, and then you planted some cards yeah, on like, him to make I, it look I, like he was yeah, cheating. I, I wanted to, yeah. you know, become his friend, and yeah. you know, try to, you know, trust me, and then I want to rake him over the coals and use him <laughs> as a tool in my grand design. Yeah, you you were able to slip some cards onto him, hoping that at some point during the rounds, he those would be exposed, he'd be caught cheating and lose that hand and put him in a bad spot for the rest of the tournament and then um, you know someone could just come along and be like hey you look like you're in a rough spot you know whose fault that is and you do a little shoulder rub squeeze <laughs> uh and that went very successfully you rolled really well uh getting some bonuses to apply in the next round uh but that does leave us uh with an opportunity uh, as we get back into our game uh venon and ziggy both uh having some chances to uh to weave their webs as they would um so what would you like to do i think venon last time you had something specific that you wanted yes, to do I yeah do. so we can go ahead uh jump in on that uh again everyone has gotten up as they're taking their their short break uh drinks being refilled uh hors d'oeuvres being brought out for uh people to eat as they socialize uh the uh, string quartet uh, picking back up in the corner, um, just the the, the uh, cloud of of uh, pleasant conversation sort of wafting through the uh, the confines of this uh, brandy parlor. Um, what, yeah, it's just uh, spends this time walking around and tipping all of the serving staff. Uh, we're not gonna that. have to cheat if you do that. They're gonna fucking cheat for you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Every person that Yasmir tips slides a fucking ace into her <laughs> yeah. sleeve. She's got like a whole deck. Take Just care you know what? of that would the not be, service staff. That would not be a bad way to do it. But uh, Venon, what are you getting up to? Sita, don't get comfortable because this isn't going to take long. Uh, everybody's everybody's sort of up and... Mm -hmm. Okay. I am going to wait until Lady Richelieu has like one swig left in her wine glass. And as soon as she finishes it, I'm going to take a bottle of red Jenny wine and fresh glass, and I'm going to approach her. Okay, do you want this to be uh, while she is talking to somebody or uh, hopefully when she is like on her own, like midway back to like ref refilling her drink or something, or maybe her, whoever she's speaking with has gone to refill her drink for her. And uh, catching her actually, alone. let me, let me catch her while she's talking to like one or two other people. Okay. So I'll uh, bring a couple of clean glasses. Yeah. I think she's currently having, uh, a, a she's currently speaking with Lady uh, Lemare, uh, who uh, has just been eliminated from the tournament, and they're kind of getting... Nobody who's been eliminated seems in, like, that bad spirits about it. Again, this isn't a lot of money to these people. Um, uh, this is mostly, like, a chair, Almost like a charity event, except it's not actually going to charity. It's going it's to... It's like a gallery. It's like, buy a... Yeah. Buy a plate. Buy a plate kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. And no um, one's ever heard of the charity it's supposed to go to. <laughs> yeah. The Ricketts Association. Uh, it's got an oddly Swiss name. Um, sorry. 
you uh but yeah she's having a conversation with her and then uh, a few other hangers on that are they're around too i uh, i see two clean glasses and a bottle of branded red jenny wine and glasses. you're still in disguise like, i'm so... in disguise yeah. i've got the I my all the tattoos are covered the mask is covering like most of uh his face the, the only thing that might cause some pause is maybe the pointed ears but there's a lot of elves there's a lot of elves in Val Royal. I'm gonna approach. Okay. And I'm gonna say um some I'll sort of like wait to I don't want to interrupt her in the middle of a sentence, but I see two beautiful ladies who have almost empty wine glasses, and I cannot stand by and let that continue. Uh you see, uh, again, the very kind of the poise, Lady Richelieu, very tall, uh, it, which is exaggerated by the heels that she's currently wearing. This long, like, flowing, uh, dark kind of, uh, uh, like, navy dress uh, with uh, her hair pulled back up, kind of like uh, water falling down uh, a few, like, ringlets of it uh, down her head. She... Um, she turns in the same time that uh, Lady uh, Lemare uh, is as well, uh, and you can. Well, see, I don't uh, think we have any beef with. Do we? No, care y'all about have never her? met we this person. We don't know her, before. right? Okay, she's fine. yeah. She's fine. Uh, she's she's an aristocrat. She owns a shipping company, so you probably have as much beef with her as you have with any aristocrat. In Maybe the city. she's really nice to the people who work for. Her. Yes. Maybe. I'm not gonna poison her. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, but she says. Uh, uh, Lady uh, Lemare turns to you and says, Oh, thank you, thank you. That's so kind of you. Uh, and she, uh, you said you had fresh glasses that you're handing Yeah, two fresh were... glasses. I'll set them on one of the little, I, I was at the little standing tables. You know, uh, like fun, yeah. like at a wedding. She uh, <laughs> she takes, she kind of slides hers towards her uh, as Lady Risha looks at you and you've seen with, you know, she's wearing a very like, <laughs> small golden mask uh and she is uh looks down at you with that same kind of haughty uh but uh but polite smile as she sees you she says thank you so much of course now this must confess is one of my mistress's favorite of our vintages opening it you will taste some notes of apricot will sneak up on you at the very end very lovely and sweet and i'm gonna pour one glass and i'm gonna pour the other glass and then i'm gonna set the bottle on the table with the red jenny logo facing them okay she uh lady risha looks at the bottle as you pour it uh yes and... this is a threat uh, just do this won't be your check for this uh but do a an empathy a perception empathy check does this have anything to do with fear it does not it does dang not it's not it will it will luckily my perception is good 18 18 uh you just see the faintest like wrinkling at the corner of her like at the edge of her nose uh as she is like you see her stifling like the the faintest bit of a sneer uh as she sees the label obviously the association with you like she knew that this was your uh your business and uh she but she she represses it and uh says Thank you very much. Uh, I'm afraid even with all the talk around town, I am yet to uh, partake in this uh, new vineyard's label. Well, now is as good a time as ever. And like I say, this is one of my mistress's favorites. You have to be careful. Some wines can be so bitter. If they're not she... aged correctly. I'm I am also just gonna like and maybe I don't know what is the check you're angling for here because I don't want to make you too many rolls. I if... want her to be afraid that okay. someone is gonna poison her ass. Yeah. Okay. Whether that distracts her, whether that makes her wanna leave, whether that makes her play very arrogantly because she thinks she's better than all of us, I don't care. But I so, wanna scare her ass. <laughs> so my question to she you She tried then, to poison me. 
Yeah, she did. Uh, my question to you then is obviously you're not disguising your voice or anything nope. uh, right now. So are you fully comfortable with her maybe suspecting or uh, being on? Are you trying to disguise the fact that it's you other than just through your appearance? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> she... Uh, she looks at the glass. She kind of ta uh, she takes. If it hand, comes down looks... to me versus the fucking city guards, I feel like I got a pretty good chance of getting out of that one. <laughs> You've met the city guard. You know who's leading them. <laughs> you guys remember uh, that party a few years ago? Uh, <laughs> Unacceptable police work. Uh, well, I was thinking about who was it that went to the. Uh the captain of the what was his name captain morgan yeah is he in this to... game is he is that captain morgan yeah that was this game yep oh oh yeah oh yeah oh, that was who, who did that that was garris it was yeah. garris yeah because yeah. then garris was like i fucking hate this guy <laughs> yeah yeah he met captain morgan who had, who yeah was the most he's king cop <laughs> yeah <laughs> I hated him. I hated his guts. <laughs> I feel pretty good about my ability to either run away or to gaslight them. Mm -hmm. So uh, she she looks down at the glass. You can see uh, Lady Lamore uh, also says, "I don't believe I've tried this either." And she uh, she takes a sip of it, uh, and you can see kind of like you know like you're, you know smells like she's practiced in in tasting wine i and, wasn't and... wine this is the, the swirl yeah. the, the snip yeah and so she goes the whole rigmarole uh tastes it and she says that's actually quite good oh i will pass this along you must come yes. visit us uh, i just might have to if you're uh doing business outside of val royale or looking to then um my company we would love to uh, discuss contracts to uh, ship this out to some of our uh, other ports. I am surprised my mistress has not already crossed the room, her ears burning of business. <laughs> I will be sure to let her know. Uh, thank you. Smash cut to Yasmir just goes money. <laughs> it's just, Yasmir just staring at us from across the room. Uh, as as you can see, like the gears turning in Lady Rushu's head before she takes a sip, I'm gonna have you go ahead and just make a. This seems like a like communication like intimidation. Uh, yeah, I don't think I can finagle anything else. Yeah, I didn't know if you were actually like trying to you know poison her. No, uh, no, no, not yet. <laughs> that comes later. I'm just uh, trying to so get her to lose at Wicked Grace right now. So yeah, because I can buy go. some really we can we can get some really good poison with that much money. Let's go with uh, communication. Uh, is intimidate? I'm, I'm pulling up my sheet right now. It's not one I have, but it is one. It is one. Yeah, okay. So I'm just rolling straight communication. Uh, yeah. So just roll straight communication. Difficulty for this is a what did I say it was? It's nineteen. Twenty. Twenty. What'd you got on the dragon die? Six. Woo! That's high roll All right. Nice. Uh, so, uh, you mark down three points. You have a plus three bonus to give out in the next round. Um, oh, does my freaking... It doesn't matter now, but does my thing come into play here? My freaking... Intimidating nobles? My, I'm good at making no people for me. You have to remind me what the scourge of nobility. Are. Sorry, I couldn't find it. Uh, enemies of that sort, nobility, suffer a minus three penalty to willpower, morale, and courage tests made in opposition to me. Uh, they may all, the character may also at the GM's option receive a bonus of up to plus two in persuading, intimidating, or bargain with those in that class of enemies. Okay, I, I would. Is, so the interesting thing here is like for anyone else at this party who like because you're in disguise they don't know who you are so you wouldn't get that bonus because it comes with your name gotcha. it's not it's not a magical bonus but considering the direct threat here is you already succeeded but i would allow it on this one because the direct threat here was your association with yourself and or potentially you know being yourself uh 22 so, then um, yeah don't need it but i'll take it and enjoy it. uh so she uh, she kind of sniffs at it 
for a moment. Uh, and you see, like, her almost reach her lips, and she stops, and she says, I fear this may be a bit too sweet for me. That's all right. You will be pleased to know that we have many different flavors, wines, drinks. We're even expanding into mead somewhat at the Red Jenny, so you must visit us. I'm sure we have something you will like. I'll consider the offer. With that, I sense I should leave you too. Your uh, time is much appreciated. As I looked at the other lady because she was nice to me. Your yeah. company. <laughs> she, uh, uh, Lady Beatrice says, uh, oh, thank you so much. Uh, and, and I will be in, in touch with your, uh, uh, your proprietor. We look forward to it. Uh, and, and I you... gave her one look, smile, yeah. stops about here. <laughs> and then I leave. They can have that bottle. I don't care. All right. Lady Beatrice can have it. She was nice to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she enjoys it. She pours herself the rest of the, of the bottle. Uh, yeah, so she, uh, I mean, she's not playing anymore. She's not worried about getting drunk. Hell yeah, uh, get so, it, girl. Uh, Enjoy you, that shit. Uh, you leave sensing that bit of, sensing the eyes following you from Lady Richelieu as you as you do. Very, very subtle approach for, for Venom. Uh, well done. Uh, Sometimes you gotta be. I don't yeah. want to bust up the whole party. I want us to win a yeah. million dollars. Um, I will swing sort of by Yasmir and point out Lady Beatrice and be like, hey, she loves your wine and she runs a shipping company and she wants to do business. It's I not why give, I went over there, but you're welcome. I'm going to give you one other thing that happens uh, that both of you would probably clock because you've got good perceptions. Uh, uh, she, after a few moments, excuses herself from uh, Lady Beatrice and uh, joins conversation with uh, Marquis Valmont. I'm assuming you. I'm assuming you didn't quite hold back. No, what? I didn't like make out with her or anything. She just liked the wine. I meant with Lady Richelieu. Oh, I was super nice. And she definitely thought I'm trying to poison her, which is cool. I did it mostly for you, but it was a little bit for me. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, but perhaps during gameplay, watch your back. I have Garrus for that. <laughs> uh, so, with um, that... Uh, before we get too much into y'all discussing, uh, while that was happening, uh, Ziggy, what are you? Uh... So Ziggy is Yasmir's bodyguard, um, and I think it would be pretty unseemly for him to just be wandering around and schmoozing at this time. So I think he's going to stick to her like glue, which um, uh, there's a couple of things there, right? So you, uh, when uh, Van, when you came and um, when Vinan uh, told Yasmira about the uh, the uh, new business prospects, prospects, um, I can't remember if uh, Garrus and I told you last week about the dark spawn presence or not. Garrus, I yeah, I did. I did tell then, and I didn't tell Yasmira. Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, Ziggy would be like, oh, I know we have a lot going on here, but it's more complicated. There's a small darkspawn presence below the, mm -hmm. yeah, underground somewhere. I'm I'm not sure how large or how far, but not far and not too large. It's a serious threat, though. And with the disciples of silence here, you know that it's them. Underground. Mm hmm. Does this place have a basement? It's something to look into, but I told you I'm sticking to you like glue for this, at least for presentations for now. If there's anyone that you want to talk to right now, wander up and talk to them. I'll stick with them. I'll or stick with you. I'll see what I can do during that conversation. 
Who's close to a service entrance? Oh, interesting. Um, uh, I would say, yeah, there's a couple of, um, of doors leading out uh, to like the kitchens and some of the back rooms and stuff here. Uh, there are like near, like posted kind of near them, not like guarding necessarily, but more like a tent, like, you know, some of the servants in their, you know, black uh, attire are staying there mostly like to keep people in the party that get too drunk from wandering back to places that they're not really supposed to be for the event um, uh, or uh, escorting people to the restrooms. Uh, but the uh, conversations happening there near there, pretty a little thin. Uh, we can say uh, for my list. I'd say near the kitchens, Doc and Galno is there with some of the other carta that he's clearly here with. Um, and uh, there are a couple other like groups like meandering up there. I won't say anybody like of note that is uh, near like the other entrance, uh, but, but some other uh, attendees. And we don't have to do the conversation on Yaz's yeah. end, but yeah, maybe just wander, chat, talk about wine with some people closer to one of those back entrances to give Ziggy a reason to be looking around. Okay. Well, I will tell you for for this part, um, and you're totally willing to do that because this could help you and kind of accomplish things through some investigating. I definitely encourage y'all to do that during this. Uh, that doesn't seem like it would probably, like, if, if Ziggy wants to fall asleep, do some, like, perception or, you know, whatever it might be towards something like this. I don't know it's what you're angling for. It's not going to aid towards Yasmer. It probably wouldn't aid towards the game uh, unless you're doing something that would involve it. But, but y'all have, like, a plus three and a plus two bonus sitting on right now. You might be fine with that if you actually want oh, to do a some six stuff. and two, right? Oh, it's We're it's half the result on the dragon oh, dark. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you mm. are, uh, you're perfectly. Yeah, I think y'all are in a good spot if you want to do that and maybe do a little bit more like investigating. Um, Is there? I'm gonna. I mean, I wouldn't be able to see a whole lot without having to leave her presence, right? I could maybe like crane my neck and look down a hallway or something. Uh, I mean, yeah, unless, I mean, so if Yasmira were to, like, adjourn to, like, the restrooms back there, that would get you a little bit further back that way. Okay. Um, yeah. and then that might, you know, you as a bodyguard, you have good reason for standing at the door when she goes, uh, back into the restroom. And maybe while well, you're, you're kind of, like, in cover there, the only people that would see you would be the people that were, like, looking down this hall. You might have a short, a, uh, like, a moment to kind of look around. She could go powder her nose, sure. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, as, so... soon as, she's, as soon as she's in the bathroom, I'm going to look around just to make sure that we weren't followed by anyone. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to, you know, like, go into my stealth mode and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and try to sneak around a little bit. Okay, um, so yeah, you, you you walk towards this uh, this corridor here that's like uh, framed by these uh, velvet curtains, and uh, one of the uh, servants points you back to the uh, to the restroom. The two of you head back that way. Yasmira heads inside while you uh, wait at the at the door. Yeah. Uh, and as you uh, as you do, yeah. What kind of check are you angling to make here? Well, more than finding out a lot, I think not getting caught in this is probably the primary objective. Sure. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do stealth, but I'm also, um, I mean, I don't know if you want me to just do one roll because I I'm gonna be trying to like detect dark spawn and like hone in closer on where exactly this is. Uh, I'm fine because this isn't specifically towards like giving bonuses. I'm fine. We can do multiple rolls here. So okay. we'll do a stealth to okay. see who, uh, if you know, how Ooh. noticeable you might be. So 14 plus uh, five. But my brain just shut clear the hell off. 19. 19. That's very good. Uh, you, um, you take a second to kind of like duck away uh, and then I'm gonna have you do a uh, 
So I'm gonna say for the dark spawn stuff, like we can roll for the check from before. You have like the drone. You've already sensed them. You kind of have the idea where it is. It's not like that just like fades away. You still have that sense of where that is located. Um, but for actually f like snooping around here and maybe catching anything that might be hidden, uh, that's not specifically dark spawn related. Uh, I'm thinking a uh, perception searching. Okay. Uh, is going to be your best check there. Okay. Well, let's give it a shot. Um, hmm. All right. So here's the deal, gang. It's only a 10, but I have my rune of fortune. I can only use it once during this entire thing. Do we think it's worth it to do that here or save it for something later on? Okay. Um, because I was going to use my two like immediately because it's only two and we've been kind of been rolling some big pluses already so. So your bonus would just go towards the card game. This yeah. Be, like, because Ziggy, you can only use this bonus for your own stuff. Yeah. Right. And yeah. This is my rune of fortune. Not it's whether Ziggy burns this case. now or burns it later for oh. something else that might happen. Oh. And a, a plus six is a huge swing. I think that it could is. turn, like, turn a ten into a sixteen, which so is, is massive, is, massive, but it's pretty damn good. But is, it could also absolutely save our bacon way later on. Yeah, because like I feel like this kind of should be something. Especially for the Angel of Death roll, I feel like this is kind of be something we should. I say. can't use it for that. Oh, we can't. Can use it for it. Okay. It's not. It's those are two different things. This is my thing that only works on my rolls. Yeah. And again, the difficulty for this was not is not necessarily a nineteen. This isn't related to the card game. This is some extracurricular investigating that y'all are doing for the long game here. Um, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, 16. let me ask you a question first. Do you think? Um, could I leverage for that role to have been hearing? Because I don't have a search uh, focus. But Ziggy does have a hearing focus, which would at least bump it up to a 12. Which would do that. Um, I will, you, you know what? So we'll just kind of like flavor it as like this, this will count towards. So I will factor in a 12 as your result for hearing. Uh, or an 18 if you decide to use your fortune, uh, your, your rune there. Um, uh, and I, what do you think, guys? Subtlety first, like, like concern and subtlety, because I, I also need to not get caught by Reyes. Yeah, I, cause, yeah. Uh, because well, you roll pretty well in your stealth. Well, I mean, the... I mean, once we get back out into the end of oh. the, I mean, if if, if you feel if you feel like you really need to, because. This this fortune roll is only going to be for your own personal stuff. So, and mm -hmm. you're not going to have a chance. You're not if you think you're going to take a risk like this one later on in the night, I would say hold it. But it doesn't look like you are right now. I think ultimately it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. You don't know what yeah. you're going to be dealing with later on. So yeah, that's that's your call. Right. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save okay. it. Yeah. So uh, you did well in your stealth. Uh, and you, as you kind of like duck away, uh, and some things I'm just going to give you just uh, with it, even with a 10, there's some stuff with searching that I'll, I'll, I'm going to throw out to you and then factoring the 12 for the hearing. Um, you, uh, there are a couple rooms back here. Um, you, uh, you find uh obviously like they're the kitchens um you have a general idea where those are but the entrance there's it isn't an entrance to the room the kitchens back here it looks like back here there's more like some private rooms uh and perhaps an office there's a door at the end of the hall uh that uh is currently closed and if you go and you just like check the handle it appears to be locked um that uh so that kind of bars your entry uh at this juncture uh, but there's also, as you're coming down the hall, across from the bathrooms, just like a little bit further down, kind of would probably looks like maybe it joins with the kitchens. Um, but uh, 
there is a uh, door here that's currently open and an inside is large. I would say the closest thing you can think of is like a conference room. Uh, it's just like a big circular table, well apportioned, like, uh, like richly adorned, like upholstered chairs. Um, Found a multifunctional uh, room. Kind of, yeah. And, and so like this looks like a room that's probably used for like maybe like private events or things uh, at the parlor. Um, it is something that would have been used for a smaller gathering than what is currently going on where Valon has rented mm -hmm. out the entire place for the evening. Um, the, or not really rented out, he owns it, but yeah. Uh, the, uh, the room itself though, I, I'd say even with your 10, catches your eye because it is currently, everything is like, the, the chairs there are neatly kind of spaced. Uh, there are already um, some uh, like places set out at the table. It looks like it is prepared for some sort of event currently. Um, but nobody's in here right now. Okay. Um... I'm going to take note of all of that and I'm going to zip back over to uh, the opening to the restrooms. And what I'll tell you with the 10 is the only room you haven't seen is the kitchen. Um, but you haven't seen any other door other than the kitchen and the closed door at the end of the hall. Uh, those would be the only route. You haven't seen any place, uh, to any, go like, down. any stairs leading down to like a, a sub level. Okay. Would it be common enough knowledge to guess that a um, a kitchen in this sort of establishment in Valrail would have a direct, like a cellar or larder, like the, uh, like, the like an entrance have. to, hmm? like the one that y'all have at the at the winery? Yeah, um, it's a possibility. Uh, with Valrail being kind of like right on the waterfront, there aren't a lot of buildings that have like basements uh, here. Um, so that's uh it's difficult to say uh but th there could be that's that's good enough for me yeah. okay um and siggy's going to slip back over uh when yes mira uh comes back out uh he'll say i didn't see anything directly there's a locked door at the end of the hall in a smaller conference room that seems to be in preparation for something maybe uh Victor's table or something, but there's there's definitely something going on back there. Okay. I'd like uh I'd like us perhaps later if one of the others are would sneak back there. Sounds like a plan. You have a quill on you? Always. I figured. Got a little bit of parchment or a napkin or anything? Takes the those eye. out of a bag, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, sketch a quick, quick map uh, of the, those areas in the back. Like, so if anybody else goes back there, they're more prepared for where to turn and where rooms are and stuff. Sure, yeah. Uh, easy. Yeah, you, you sketch it out, you know, question marks about, like, you know, this is roughly, like, the policeman of the kitchen, this is this room back here, there's the locked door, so, like, but you get a general layout, kind of where everything connects to. Yeah. Um, perfect. Awesome. Uh, I'll give you all a second if you want to gather back up as a group. Uh, if there's anything you want to talk about, but it seems like the there's a, sm a short announcement that's made that the break will end in five minutes for people to start making their way back to the table. Um, but if the uh, if your group wants to have a quick chat, uh, you are welcome to. Real quick, what's the seating like for us when the game is going? Uh, most people are staying. So there's there are some seated seating areas. So uh, there are some booths and things. That's like not a lot of people are sitting in because it's mostly for like the normal day to day like uh, operations of the restaurant. Some people have like sit down there to have a drink. Most people are standing at like you know like the high top. Like I think Van said the like you know wedding reception tables. Uh, like the uh, high top tables there are. Uh, and then there's like some seating at the bar. 
uh, around. How as well. far away is there? Like a uh, a limit to how close people can be to the table? Uh, there, yeah, the table's kind of cordoned off to like where normally like the main seating area would be for the restaurant. All the tables have been pulled out of like nowhere in sight, and then this large uh, card table has been placed here instead. I think for the most part, like people don't aren't like congregating like around the table during the game but people can come up to it to spit like there are people who come up to like you know have a brief word with somebody who's sitting at the table uh but for the most part like you can comfortably sit and stand without being awkward within like 15 10 to 15 feet of the table okay. just there's otherwise you're just be like standing there behind someone's shoulder the whole time and yeah. probably at some point someone be like hey fuck off <laughs> like yeah. you're making me nervous yeah Cool. I didn't have any specific need for that information. I yeah. just wanted to get a good, good picture. Of Again, that. I'm really in my head. This is the Casino Royale setup. <laughs> if you've seen that scene, yeah, if you have that point of reference, that's what this place looks like right now. Um, so if that helps put a picture in your mind. Yeah. Um, so, uh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to share? Who's the Mads Mickelson? Is it the Marquis or is it? Oh yeah, I met the Marquis Valmont is totally the Mads Mickelson <laughs> yeah. of this. Your uh uh what's his face that plays the American uh agent uh at the table. The one was in Westworld, uh I forget his the actor's name. Uh that was Doc and Galno, who's been eliminated at this point. Uh so <clears throat> Um I, yeah, I, well unless Ziggy wants to fill Garrison on your investigation. That's about. Yeah. Garrison has really nothing else he's going to mention. Yeah, Ziggy would definitely want to keep you guys all abreast of that. Uh, I just want to say a little his reconnaissance. Jeffrey, right? Oh, the guy from. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yes, yeah. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Peoples Hernandez. There's a handful of private rooms back beyond the bathrooms in an office near the end of the hall. It's locked. Could be nothing, but. It take me a lot longer to break that lock off and make a lot more noise than one of you probably. It's more than likely they just want to keep guests out of there, but you know. Yeah. Let's not forget the dark spawn. Dark spawn below us. I seriously doubt the dark spawn are sitting in the conference room, but conference can... room isn't below us. I can take a look if you want. Here, lay out. Got it. I'll report back. Now Ziggy's got to eat it. <laughs> no yeah, I think Venon. <laughs> Venon has. They've been doing this for long enough. Ziggy holds it out. Venon looks at it, doesn't take it, looks it over, says, "Got it." Garrus just looks at uh, Ziggy like he's expecting him to eat this thing. They <laughs> come on. You just see, just goes into the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just shoves it up through the behind like the fake golden beard. It's just like stuffed underneath. You see a little piece of it stuffed underneath the bottom of the helmet. <laughs> a quick learner. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's nothing else. Uh, no big revelations here so far. So uh, the uh, everyone begins sitting back at the table. Uh, the chairs have been kind of brought together, like uh, removing the the places, like giving more space between the uh, the players at the table um, for the game as uh, people have been eliminated. Uh, you take your seat, Yasmira, uh, uh in front of your pile of, of chips, uh, and the cards are brought out, shuffled, uh, and once again dealt out to the players. Uh, so we will get started with our next round of play. Uh, first things first, the ante for this round is two fortune. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that off. So you're down to 15. Um, and we begin. I'm gonna read. All right. Uh, go ahead and make your reason check. Empathy. Cool, 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 cool. And remember, for those giving bonuses, you have to decide before before the. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
19 on the dot. On the dot, okay. On the dot. Uh, you succeed kind of gathering up the players at the table, I should have said beforehand. Uh, it's down to six, including you, uh, with Laura Donna Bordeaux sitting to your right, Roland Maldonado sitting, Maldonado sitting to your left, uh, Lady Richelieu, Lord Reyes, and Marquis Valmont. Um, everyone seems very focused. Again, it's still kind of lighthearted, but it's like the players have been eliminated coming in for the second round. People are focusing up a bit more. It's a little bit harder to kind of get a read on the remaining players at the table, but uh, you you do you are able to uh, uh, to get enough of a read on on people to maybe give you a, a head uh, a hand up. So, what was the result on the dragon die? Only a two. Okay, so you get a plus two bonus to your next bluff. Uh, I'm going to give my plus two now for your next bluff, so you have a good plus four going into it. Okay, and okay. We're, round two won't be the bluff. It's either the draw or the cheat uh, right now. Uh, but if you want to plan on using that for bluff, sure. you can. Yep. Um, okay, uh, so your, uh, your, uh, your choices now are to either uh, do your draw check uh, to cheat uh, or to pass and go on to round three. You know we be cheating. All right. Uh, so either ledger domain, ledger domain. or deception. Yeah. Okay. Woo! 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 We sent it. Uh, okay. So that's... 13 plus 9. 22. 22. With Succeed. a 6 on to drag in. All right. Uh, and... So you get up to six stunt points right now. Yes. Okay. Uh, for okay, those, okay. I'll, I'm just going to talk. So while you're reading through those, uh, so the options are either mental math for a bonus on calculate, reading the room for a bonus on bluff. Uh, both those can be taken multiple times. Uh, counting cards, which lets you uh, get a bonus for your next draw press uh which lets you uh get a bonus to your next raise again that one can be taken multiple times too uh there's palm which immediately gives you plus one fortune as you palm a card uh unfazed uh which lets you ignore the penalty if you fail your next read test uh and all in which is all six stun points you get three fortune immediately but you automatically move to round uh, to the, we automatically end the game. Got it. I think I'm going to take Palm. Okay. So uh, that bumps you up to 16 of Fortune. And I'll take I'll take a read the room too. So plus one to the bluff as well. Okay, so now you're up to plus seven on your bluff. Uh, so it's communication deception. So yeah, it'd be a plus seven. And then if I take the plus two from... Uh, oh, I meant plus... Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, yeah, plus seven, plus nine, plus two. So plus nine on addition to whatever your bonus would be mm -hmm. normally. So you're in a pretty good place for bluffing next time. So, uh, and then uh, with your... Results, you got a six on the dragon die? E. Okay, so you gained six points, you're up to 22 fortune. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, you're pretty much an auto success for uh, the for the round. Um, we immediately proceed to round three, where you can either bluff, raise, or check. Oh, we're bluffing. All right, uh, so go ahead and make your bluff test. Okay. Ooh, I'm glad we have those bonuses because that was not as good. Um, da, da, da. So that's ten points. Deception. Six, seven. Nineteen on the die because of that plus two from Garrus. Nineteen oh. total. Damn. Okay. 
That was uh, a shit roll. You do succeed, which gives you a plus two to your next raise test. Uh, so as the chips begin to uh, to be thrown back out, or thrown onto the table as we go around, everyone placing their bets on their current hand, uh, you uh, uh, are able to manipulate your opponents. Uh, you feel pretty successfully. Uh, so go ahead and make a uh, communication bargaining test. Sixes, baby. Yes. Uh, So that's uh, 18 plus uh, six is 24. Okay. You definitely. The plus two from that bluff. So 26. (laughs) You you definitely succeed here uh, uh, with your raise. Able to, like, again, with your bluff, everyone begins to throw out chips. You feel pretty confident you've got them on the hook at this point, uh, sitting on a pretty good hand. Um, You, so with six on the dragon die, you'll lose three uh with as part of raising here uh but you will move back we'll go back to round two and you have six stunt points to uh to spend as well yes okay um we're gonna do we're doing pretty good should i just do an all in and go and go to round four just get another plus three yeah, I put you up to twenty-two, and you only have to get a nineteen in order to uh, uh, succeed in the in the last test. Man still has a thing to give you too, right? Oh yeah, we have a plus three. Okay, yeah, then, there's a plus three maybe, on the table. Then let's let's do this. We'll just we'll 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 buzz through one more time. Okay. Okay. So let's do we'll do another cheat. And, All right. Uh, yeah, we'll do another cheat. Okay. Oh, that's another stunt too. Um, I have to use the stunt points I already have. Forget it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, the nine. Twenty. Okay, twenty succeeds. Uh, what'd you go with the dragon die? Uh, three. Okay, so you get another three. So. All right, up to 22 fortune. Uh, and yeah, let's go and, before we forget, go and spend your stunt points from. Yes, uh, I'll do Palm again, get another fortune. Okay. Um, and we'll do, because we're going to betting. Uh, we'll do another read the room. We'll do another plus one to the bluff. All right. So we will a bluff again. Um, yeah, okay. I think I'll save it for the race. Woo! Okay. Um, uh, uh, uh. I stunt it again. <laughs> uh, I'm stunting all over the place. Uh, eight plus five. Here's two flips on the table. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> beep you, you, you! Uh, eight plus five. But no one sees it. No one sees. She's, she's, she's doing backflips in her heart uh so math okay plus 21 uh 21 okay you succeed so go to make a raise test with a plus two bonus so community okay. bargaining. and let's just go ahead we'll end this one and i'll use the plus three from then on this so this is plus five plus my uh plus my bonuses so okay because I can't, I can't use the bonuses on the angel roll, right? No. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just run this raise. Hey, do it. Uh, twenty-one. Nine plus. Okay, this one was kind of shitty, but that's okay because we have nine plus six plus five is 20. Okay. Uh, what'd you get on the dragon die? Oh. Uh. All right. So with another successful raise, keeping the, the pots growing as a result, 
Uh, so with where you're at right now, that would bring you back to, uh, uh, we'll, we'll go back to round two. So you can either, we can do, you can do more draw and cheats, uh, or you can pass and check and move on to round four. I feel bad taking up all this time is the only thing. No, it's okay. You're trying to Oh, all right. Wait a minute. This is this is great. We're gonna okay. be rich. Okay. Uh fuck it. One more round. Okay. You drawing or cheating? Cheating. Alright. Have you only cheated and bluffed? No, there's <laughs> been a there's been a draw. Uh, I, okay. I did do a draw in there at in one the point. <laughs> one. Uh again um twenty twenty okay you succeed what'd you go the dragon die four uh and that's a stunt as well all right we so I'm gonna I'm gonna palm again so, All right, that brings it to 26. You are just palming cards left and right here. You have an entire deck of cards. That's in what your these hand right sleeves now. are for. <laughs> That's what the, the, the gloves. Servant the servant sheet is. Yeah. Exactly. Gloves so we move full back, of cards. We move back to round three as the pot has grown, as more people are involved. Again, we're kind of like several hands here, but this is the one that matters that we're kind of focusing in on right now. Uh, but the. Uh, if you want to go ahead and end the game here, you would check. Or uh, if you're wanting to keep things going and back go back to round two, then you would do either a bluff or a raise. Let's just check. We're gonna check. Okay. So you check. Uh, everyone on the table checks. That's still in the hand. Uh, and we move on to the end game. Uh, so in this case, we'll go ahead and do our uh, angel of death roll, uh, though it does not really matter as your Let's just see how high a number we can get. Uh, sure. Beautiful. That's 12 plus 26. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so 38. This should count as intimidation. <laughs> this, uh, is, this is pretty much like big dick energy right now oh. and i think yasmira should be taking advantage of it yeah <laughs> uh would you roll the dragon die there? Just a power play uh that was a five okay jesus all right you're at 31 fortune as you end the game as uh yasmira has probably the most sizable chip count at the table uh and there's uh applause uh from the onlookers as the as the round ends um and uh as you have fully cleaned out uh a couple of the other contestants uh you see as you've been staring across the table uh laura donna badur went out pretty quickly uh roland maldonado uh went out as well did he get uh, caught was, with cards up his sleeve yeah as the cards <laughs> fall out of his sleeve or oh, no. i think that oh, happened like wow. in the first hand uh and it really should he lost some he lost a lot of chips there as he was caught uh and then from that point on it was just kind of like a slow down Hill uh, <laughs> descent from him. Uh, so he is in a uh, he's in a he was in a rough spot. He went out pretty quickly after that until it was just you and Lady Richelieu. Uh, and uh, as you can see, she's um, it hasn't touched her wine. You can see some tension as her eyes kind of flicking around the room. You can definitely see like she's on edge during the entire game and not focusing enough on on uh, her hand or yours. Uh, yeah, it's and not fun thinking you might be poisoned. Is as it? you, as you, you uh, as the cards, time? Are as the cards are laid tower out. of will? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't fucking think so, She's bitch. not destined for greater things. She's as destined the to die. <laughs> cards are laid out on the table. Uh, she keeps as much composure as you can. You can see the frustration uh, as uh, you uh, uh, eliminate her from the tournament. Again, nothing. No <laughs> smiles, no, no, like, yay, I won. Collect chips, organize them accordingly, do maybe a little bit of like the chip between the fingers trick, put the last one down give a little nod to everybody, take my drink and get off the table. Stone right. fucking cold. Right now, Yasmira is just giving off Jennifer Tilly energy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, perfect. Uh, I'm imagining and... that if this was the movie, she'd be played by Rosamund Pike. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. Love it. I'll Just take that it. that absolute stone cold, I could kill you if I wanted to. <laughs> uh, that uh, that ends the the second round of the tournament as uh, it is down to just three players. Uh, Yasmira, Marquis Valmont, and Lord Reyes uh, at the table. Uh, and they call for another break. You can see uh, some, like, uh, as the as the round ends, um, the uh, uh, Reyes turns to uh, or uh, Valmont turns to Reyes and sort of claps him on the shoulder. Reyes is like, uh, I'd say like in chip count, probably beneath, like he's in third right now, while uh, you and Valmont have been like neck and neck uh, the entire time. Um, the uh, and Valmont uh, comes around the table towards you to uh, hold out a hand and say, "Very well done." Right back at you, Marquis. Lady Richelieu is a very competent player in her own right. I imagine she won't shake this one off for some time. I am told she holds a grudge, but mm. hopefully I was mistaken. <laughs> I'm sure tempers will cool uh, and pride will mend in due time. I look forward to the uh, to the next round, uh, as uh, he releases your hand and uh, heads uh, and excuses himself and says, "I have some business to attend to in our short interlude here." Of course, our gracious host. Uh, and uh, he turns and uh, moves to mingle with the others. I am wearing gloves. He can't poison me through my skin. <laughs> I was about to ask you if, like, if Yasmir like wiped her hand afterwards or something. Yes. Burn that glove and get out your spare pair. Yeah, that's what you need to do. You're really impressive, Yasmir. I gotta say, honestly, I thought we'd have more time. More time. Well, I have a feeling this next round is going to be the last one, man. Yeah. Who's left? Uh, Valmont and Reyes. Uh, but I will say, with the rules of the tournament, uh, we will have at least two more rounds. Oh, okay. Okay. actually, Valmont's we're not going to let this party end early. We're guaranteed okay. to have only two more rounds here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Before you win, make my presence known to Ray. We need to talk anyway. Wise. I, I didn't hear you. What? Are you sure that's wise? No. But, but it will shake him up. And he's a cold, calculated guy, but once you get under his skin, if you can make it under his skin, it rattles him rattle him, he might do something impulsive himself. As long as that impulsive thing is not directing Dorman to crack your skull in. <laughs> I taught Dorman. All right. Look, he's a big boy. I also wiped his ass for a few years. Now's not the time to get arrogant, Siggy. Fair enough. We can do that later look. once we won. Yeah, look, and if you don't want me to, if you think me revealing myself to him is a bad idea, then maybe I won't, but... It's a good idea, but right now I don't think it would be ideal. We still have two more rounds to go. Yeah, I thought there was only one left. And I think once the last round finishes, it'll be too late. Whatever their plan is, is going to go into action. Whatever the Marquis' plan is, is going to go into action. You also Marquis risk did. them kicking off the plan early if you get on their skin. He did say he has some business to attend to between rounds. So if someone would like to keep an eye on him, that might be prudent. 
I'm going to talk to old Roland after this. Um, I don't think it might be best if I try to keep an eye on Belmont. I'm going to be creeping around anyway. I'll start with okay. him. All right. Don't do anything stupid while I'm gone. <laughs> I hate it when I miss the stupid stuff. Zero promises. Garrus is going to go over to see his good buddy Roland. See how he's up to. All right. Uh, and as you all make your, your plans for this uh, break period, we're going to go ahead and take our break here too so uh thanks everyone out there for watching we will be back in a few moments to continue our game uh in the meantime do as we do go take a break drink some water stretch whatever you need to do and we'll be back here very soon to conclude our session and until then stay tuned and welcome back internet thanks for hanging out with us while we take our while we took our break we're going to go ahead and jump right back in as our tournament enters uh, its second break period. Uh, so I think we had a couple things that people wanted to do. Garrus wanted to talk to Roland Maldonado again. Uh, Venon, you wanted to... Uh, what were, you said there was something you were going to do. I don't remember what it was. I'm going to follow the marquee. Okay. I'm going to try to spy on the marquee. So Venon doing some information gathering. Uh, Gara is trying to fuck with the tournament a bit. Uh, Ziggy, what were you thinking? I spent the whole break trying to figure that out, and I, I I've got <laughs> nothing. The, like if if the mar if there's only three people left, and the marquee is wandered off, the only person left to talk to is Ray. Well, yeah, he's not, I will say, the Marquis won't be gone the entire break if you wanted to target the Marquis instead. Uh, okay. But that's, that's fine. I'm not going to hem y'all in like that. Then, uh, then maybe, uh, I think Ziggy would say to uh, Yaz, when the Marquis comes back, let's lay the emotional muscle down on him. How so? <clears throat> He's very powerful, but so are you. And with a chunk of steel standing behind you, it doesn't have to be any real fear, just enough to uh, rattle. You want me to strike up a conversation with the host of this party so you can flex at him behind me? I had a little bit more of an eloquent description of it than that, but yeah. I have no issue with that. I just wanted to make sure that that was the plan. Yeah, let's do that. All right. All right. Uh, let's. Uh, the, we'll just go in the same order we did last time um, with those three actions in mind. So we can start with Garrus and then do Venom and then see. Oh. Uh, so Garrus, uh, Roland is currently uh, at the bar. It was like watching the tournament as he was drinking, just like. Just, just, he looks from, like, you can see the red in his face, either from the alcohol or just from the anger of, like, how that last round went. And you can see that's going to haunt him for a while uh, as you, uh, as you stride up to him. Uh, Garrus heads on over, sits at the bar, leans back, sits at the bar next to a roll and looks at the bartender. Two, two, two please. <clears throat> Roland, hey buddy, how you doing? I mean, if you were watching the same game that I just was, uh, I think you have a pretty good idea of that. Yeah, I, I, ooh, I'm gonna be honest with you, Roland. I did not expect uh, this this game to get this aggressive. I I thought we were I I assumed this is just a big old thing for everyone to come here and have fun and network. Am I right? But uh, it gets uh gets gets cut cutthroat in these streets, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I sort of assumed that uh, people would start throwing elbows at some yeah. point, but 
Especially with what, what Valmont said, too, afterwards. Takes a sip of his drink. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. He kind of, like, blinks a little, like, turns over to you and says, uh, what did he hmm? say? I mean, I'm not certain. I, I'm not certain, really. I should, t I, listen, Valmont, you know, he's a big, powerful guy in these circles, right? I, I wouldn't want to cause, like, any kind of friction between you and him, especially if you're trying to do business with them, especially when he said that stuff about small business owners. You know, the ones from out of town. He, like, just fully turns in his seat to face you. And it's like, all right, just, just listen, man. Just, just lay it on me straight. Like, wh what did you hear? Look, I heard that he was planning on, you know, doing big business with you, depending on how well you did in the game. And because you dropped out now, because you lost, he's now calling you a, <laughs> a country bumpkin that doesn't know how to handle it. I'm gonna go ahead and have you make your roll right there, Mon Frere. Uh, oh boy. Uh, so this one is gonna be definitely another communication. Yeah. Uh, deception. Probably. Yeah, I think deception, lying and tricking. <laughs> yeah. I just again, it gets me every time. Whereas lying and tricking does less mentally adept than you. So someone smarter than you. Better just punch him in the side of the head. Yeah. It's 23. 23 just makes it. Uh, the... He... Uh, oh, and I got uh, two on the dragon dice. Two on the dragon. Okay, so that'd be a plus one bonus. You can yep. give it the next, the next okay. round. He... Like, clenches his jaws. He stares at you like really waiting to see like you can tell there's that beat of anticipation where he's just like waiting to see if you like are fucking with him or you're making a joke or something like that and he sees just like stone faced that son of a bitch yeah that wasn't that wasn't our deal wasn't well, our what deal. do you mean it wasn't your deal it's no just thank you for telling me oh of course you know Look, we we small business. We gotta look out for each other, right? And he holds out a hand to give uh, him a dap. <laughs> he returns. <laughs> give him a dap, and I pull him in close, and I pull him in close, and I just lean and whisper in his ear. But what I think right now is you should send him a message so he does not fuck with you anymore. He pats him on the back a couple of times, and then goes back to his drink. <laughs> You see, like, he sits there for a second, second, a few, like, for a few minutes, like, next to you, just, like, in silence as he's, like, as just the the fire is, like, burning inside of him. Uh, you definitely see it's had as a fact. We will get back to that in a second. Uh, I love it when they say that. I, that's got to be one of my favorite phrases out of this whole game is, we're going to get back to that in a second. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That is going to fuck some shit up. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> Venom, you are going to follow. Yep. The marquee. Okay. So again, this won't be for a bonus, but this will be for some information gathering to figure out like the greater picture at play here. Yeah. Uh, so I, I will just go ahead and make. I'll go and have you make the check, and then we'll go for from there. So, uh, stealth seems the most applicable. It's my favorite word. God, my bonus is so high. <laughs> 24 24 okay With four stunt points okay okay um you can use exploration stunts in here again because this isn't really if there's something you want to <clears throat> do with but i'll go ahead and start narrating kind of what you find yeah. uh what happens uh the marquee heads back uh into the back rooms um with uh with rays 
Uh, oh, actually, no. You know what? We'll say with Lady Richelieu instead. Okay. I think that's the conversation he wants to have right now. Um, the two of them go back, like, down this corridor where the restrooms are, and they actually duck off into that, um, uh, into that, like, meeting room, that conference room area. Uh, and you use that moment to kind of follow, slinking down the hallway, like you're heading to the bathroom, and then just kind of ducking around near the corner to listen in on this conversation. Uh, and you hear Valmont saying, uh, oh, wait, hold on, I need to find something real quick. Uh, I don't know. Did you ever give Lady Richelieu a first name? No. Ah. Uh, because I don't I have it in my notes. I say that. I think she referred to him by first name at some point. Or he referred to her by first name. Or no, you. Wait. Lady Richelieu. Does first Lady name. Richelieu have? I thought yeah. you were asking if I gave her my first name. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, okay. I mean, I'm sure Venon knows what it is, but uh, let me double check real quick. Nope, I did not. Okay. Uh, I'll just make one up. Uh, he, you hear conversation says, uh, you hear Belmont's voice. All right, Octavia, what is the, what's going on? Uh, and you hear voices. I fear that your ploy here may have attracted some unintended guests. And why ever do you say that? Well, as you're very well aware, I have certain loose ends hanging around, and I fear one of them may be in attendance this evening. And... And it puts all of us at jeopardy. Uh, maybe not everything, maybe not you, but if you want my cooperation in this, then I need more assurances. This problem is going to be dealt with quickly. <sighs> Octavia, Lady Octavia. My lady, I can promise you that your security here is paramount. And while certain disruptions this evening were forewarned, I can assure you that the evening is going exactly as planned. We can discuss this further after the tournament, if you still have concerns about the efficacy of my plans but I can promise you that you're in good hands here so long as you follow the fold I don't enjoy you speaking to me like one of your peons we're equal partners in this. Or have you forgotten? Of course. Your partnership in this endeavor is important to me. And whatever I can do to ensure your participation, I will certainly endeavor to do. I expect more than endeavoring. I expect results. Of course. Now, is there any other matter you wish to say? No. That's it. Best of luck in the rest of your tournament. Uh, and you begin to hear her footsteps uh, heading towards the door you're at. You can duck across the hall to the bathroom, uh, ducking just out of sight as you hear her uh, very, very, like, staccato footfalls, uh, uh, down the, uh, down the hallway back to the main room, uh, and a few moments later, 
uh, you hear the Marquise follow. Uh, are there any staff around? Uh, not, uh, there are some, if you leave the restroom and kind of head back more towards the main room, there are some like on, I, like standing by the door to help like point people towards the restrooms. Could I, is it possible? I don't want to like walk back out and then immediately leave again is the problem. <laughs> um, is it possible that I could sort of like stay back a little bit and just like catch Oh yeah, yeah, One sure. You 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 like step out of the the bathroom and like you can make like a sigh or something like that just to draw their something that they like somebody in their position would be like clued in to like do something about. Uh, and uh, one of them like turns down the hallway and then uh, walks down towards you and says, uh, "Might I help you?" Yes, actually. Um, would you do me a favor? Why, of course. Um written down a little note on a little little scrap of paper okay my mistress tall hat yeah generally very scary in charge of the wine ah lady Asmira, of course will you like to sew her of course and only her They give a nod of acknowledgement and uh, take the paper. I'll give them some silver. You can give a few silver. For their they, trouble. They pocket, said, oh, uh, unnecessary, but appreciated. Uh, and again. they pocket that and they head back towards uh, uh, out of the room and over towards where Yasmira is standing with Ziggy uh, and Yasmira. Um, uh, one of the serving staff walks up to you and says, a message for you, ma'am. Um, thank you. Can't Tip them again. <laughs> Making out bank today. Uh, <laughs> As you should. It matters. Uh, and they, they head off. Leaving when we kill this guy, these people are going to need jobs. <laughs> uh, we what take is the care of our staff. Assuming Yasmir reads it, what is the uh, She just throws it She eats it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. God damn it, I'm supposed to read it and then eat it. <laughs> read it, then eat it. <laughs> damn it. It says... MV. And LR. Literally are in on it. Going underground. V. All right. She'll, she won't eat this one. It seems a little too gauche, so she'll just stuff it in her bosom. So, Vedin, are you you're planning on trying to like skulk further and find out what's going on? Yeah. Okay. If both of them are in on it, then Vedin's assuming that everyone else is too. Okay. Um, I love that. So, what we will do is, I think, for like the timing of everything, we will we're gonna make that your next break action but it will have happened during the game itself okay can i use my stump points yeah what's your stump point um i had four so i want to do a resources at hand um choose a focus you don't have that falls under the same ability as the test you're making i'm pulling up the list right now um you're considered so dexterity to have that focus until your timer menu changes yeah so i'm gonna pull a... yeah so acrobatics bows brawling calligraphy crafting Dueling, grenades, initiative, ledger domain, light blades, lock picking, writing, staves, stealth, and traps. Yeah, I'm gonna pull um, ledger domain for lock picking purposes. Okay, lock picking is yeah, lock picking is its own thing though. Yeah, you want to take lock picking? Yeah, I'll, do, I'll do lock picking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, gotcha. So I have a focus in that until. Awesome. The so. Scene. We could say, like, are you planning on, like, going for that door at the end of the hall? I'm going to start there. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I, I love that. So you kind of take a moment and kind of duck back around. You wait till the, you're waiting till the card game gets started, where everybody's nice and focused on what's going on. So you can head uh, and start snooping around. Love that. Uh, Ziggy and Yasmira, 
Marquis Von Mont returns from the back rooms and heads off kind of like the corner. And it's like, again, like shaking hands with people, saying, you know, again, like, thank you for coming and that sort of stuff. Uh, so the two of you were going to approach. What kind of tone do you want to go with? Look at how impressive we are. Uh, it could be good for your business. Fucking us over could be bad for your business. Given the information that Venom just gave me, I would perhaps play along the lines of understanding that he and Lady Richelieu have quite an extensive relationship. Just tip the hand a little. I like it. Just <laughs> enough. Uh, the the two of you head over to the marquee, catching him like between uh, conversations with the people as he kind of bumps into you and he says, pardon me. Oh no, not at all. When he bumps into her, I'm going to do a little bit of that security guard thing and just be like, excuse me, sir. <laughs> he kind of like, he moves back, like doesn't put him, he says, of course, of course. Uh, you're very vigilant personal security here. I value that, that's very shrewd of you. The lady hires only the best. I'm sure she does. He is very correct in that. Is there anything amiss that I can help you with? Looks to Ziggy. This is your rodeo. I'm here for security purposes, my lord. And I am, uh... I'm sure you can understand far from my home, so I am at your hospitality. Whatever your concerns are, I'm, I'm sure we can accommodate if you've noticed something in our event here that seems out of place for you. We have noticed things. I have heard of your game, Matt this Orlesian thing you play, I hope you understand that we've been doing it for hundreds of years. I mean, it's going to deadlock Marquis and say, you're not nearly as adept at it as you think you are, sir. Your allegiances are known. That's it. I'm going to go ahead and have you make, what is this? Uh, is there something you're angling for that you have a focus oh, on? Oh, Intimidate for sure. Okay, so it's Strength Intimidate, right? Uh, or no, yeah, can I do like a shoulder roll? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't want to make Strength Intimidation. T -pose I do are power. T-pose they... are power. T-pose are power. I love that they put Intimidation under Strength for, for this, because it's something that like in other systems, it's like... Uh, well, I like it, the flexibility of it, you know what yeah. I mean? Like that was... When I play D&D, &D, that's always one of the first ones that I'm like, you, you could take either group. or, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you do yeah. strength or uh, have it be a, a charisma thing. Um, okay, so that's only nine, but I get like a plus eight or something to this. Hang on. The uh, target number you're looking for is 22. You might want to use that uh, Yeah, I'm glad I saved fortune it. Fortune on that. Yep, there we go. Uh, yeah, yep, that is a plus eight. Uh, so that's going to make it a 17. At the six, we'll make it a 23. I get two stunts. Okay, so that would be a plus one bonus that you could give in the next round. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, you see, uh, there, there's a flicker of concern. I, I think from the audience perspective, like, given the conversation he just had and what's happening right now, I think there's like a moment where he's... Right. Ah. I'm assuming you're referring to Ozma. Are you from there? Yes. I know any cast list dwarves that uh, have lived on the surface for some time, but you bear the markings of one who has spent much time in dwarven soci uh, upper society. You're familiar with Orzammar. That is good. I then am. you must be familiar with the Battle Ragers. That I am. Good. If your ladies 
security is of your concern for the evening, I can have a few additional attendants on watch. I'm all Whatever. she needs. Very well, then. It is within your purview as a personal security to do what you must to ensure uh, your lady's uh, uh, well-being for the evening. I will leave that in your hands and speak to my head of security here to redouble our efforts in case there should be any ill play afoot. If you would excuse me, I have a few more matters to attend to during this break. Yes, I don't do that. I don't do that. Yes, it's just been standing there, not even looking at their conversation, just like glancing across the room, drinking a glass of wine, and just very nonchalantly as Orzmar is discussed, just sort of pulling the key <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> more fully into sight on uh, on her uh, on her belt. Yeah. Uh, no, he definitely seems rattled <laughs> by that exchange that was not on Ooh, his uh bingo this is just card. flavor but i want to add more one more little thing on there uh what what, what was his name dokken yeah the uh the the carter are they still around yeah yeah great i don't care if it makes any sense to them whatsoever but while marquee can still see me i want to look at them and do like a finger <laughs> at him okay <laughs> <laughs> <Black man headshot. laughs> Uh, <laughs> Duncan is like sitting at the table having a drink. You do that. He's just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should just go over and talk to them after this as well. Just sure. to fuck um, with them. Yeah. He, he, he uh, Marquis clocks that too. And it's like, what's going on? Like, it's suddenly getting a little paranoid about what's going on here. Right. You see, if you could excuse me. And he turns around. And as he turns around, uh... <laughs> Pushing through the crowd. Yes! Uh, Roland comes up and grabs the marquee by, like, the like the scruff. Uh, and yes. it's like, you bastard, we had an agreement. You had nothing to do with the card game. I... You set me up. You set me up. And you see, like, as he's getting really close, the marquee's like, Roland, please, let's discuss this. I'm sure whatever you heard, it was a misunderstanding. Oh, there was no misunderstanding, you slimy... B and as he uh, he is cut off mid-sentence, uh, as moving in very quickly uh, and sort of, like, clotheslining and bringing him down to the ground, uh, Doman uh, grabs him and slams him down to the ground, uh, which is a heavy thought. Everyone goes quiet in that moment is looking over as the breath is knocked out of uh as of roland as he is just like uh gasping just, uh, uh, and doman without even like it's just kind of like one knee on the ground has his hand down is still kind of very didn't look like it took him much effort to do this uh and he looks back at the marquee and says sir are you all right uh and the marquee kind of shaking it's like straight says, i'm fine i'm fine <sighs> Take him to the back to cool off. We'll speak more after the tournament. Um, and uh, <laughs> Roland is like, uh, uh, again, still gasping as uh, Doman grabs him and like heaves him back up as easily as he thrust him to the ground. Uh, and just like hand on his shoulder begins escorting him like through the crowd. Uh, Roland is still trying to breathe and is like staggering over as uh, Doman is holding him up. Uh, and the two of them head into the back uh and uh kind of around the corner actually no he takes him through uh he takes him through the kitchens uh and oh shit uh, and out of sight oh shit he took him through the kitchen motherfuckers gonna get their legs broken <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be hanging from a meat hook in the kitchen uh, <gasps> ziggy and yaz go over and just talk to talking just to, just to keep it up yeah just, talking is gonna what was going on? <laughs> yeah, we were saying you needed to try some of this wine. I know you prefer ale, but... What happened with that one? It seems our dear host, uh... Maybe... Spinning a few too many plates? 
Seems like it. Uh, and you see, like, uh, the Marquis uh, kind of as he straightens up looks says, Apologies, everyone. Uh, it seems that Mr. Maldonado had a few too many drinks. We will let him cool his heels for a bit as uh, we return to our game. Uh, speaking of which, uh, he looks over as like some of the attendants nod and they begin to get ready, like cutting the break a little bit short to get the game back going. He says, we should return uh, as uh, battle beats happen. So Venon's kind of out. Uh, we'll, we'll, do, we'll deal with Venon. Uh, when we get back around to the next no you won't uh, no one ever does uh is there anything between garris and yasmira and ziggy um i'm fully expecting that yaz has told ziggy and garris like hey oh yeah we'll touch base like told ziggy for sure um and then yeah we'll touch base before she sits back down at the table i think yeah like garris definitely will touch base with yasmir and just like sidle up like when they're like sitting at a table like leaning at one of those little cocktail tables garris just like leans at a cocktail table like not even looking at him just like looking around that was your work i'm supposing oh you know just a little this and that but that's not important Turns out that he did have some kind of dealing with Roland. There was some kind of backdoor deals going on, and something got fucked up because of it. Well, he also has dealings going on with the dear lady Richelieu. Ben is looking in on it. Roland's so business again? He's uh, out of town businessman. Yeah, uh, Roland, you would know, is a um, Ferelden merchant uh that uh also owns like a big smithy uh here in, in mm-hmm. Valreal, but does a lot of like import export smithy yeah, for elden smithy to be more specific Where are our friends of silence originally from oh, uh yeah they're all over um yeah, they're nowhere, nowhere in particular before they were recruited by the Grey Wardens. Okay. Relis Dalish. Uh, uh, Domans Avar. Avar. Yeah, who would be uh, kind of Ferelden. Uh, I think the Avar are from... Or like a Ferelden adjacent. They're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They're like the bar- the barbarians of the kingdom. Yeah. Uh, Reyes is Orlesian. Um... Faye is uh Faye, I'm... obviously. Yeah, obviously. Uh I don't know. Faye was probably but from between some like the the like cut is like countryside, like not really specific to any one nation. And then uh Brila is Dalish. Could be for any number of reasons, but I doubt he would get that upset if it was just some sort of shipping business deal. Well, I did man like that over horseshoes. I kind of did stoke the flames just a little bit, but the flames were there, obviously. I see the smithy pun you just did. Well done. I try my best. Where's... Where's Venon at? Underground. Keeping an eye. Oh, okay. Good. All right. Well, you get back in there and win this. I suggest you two do the same. Heads on swivels. Will do. And not on me. I can take care of myself. Oh, you're fine. I have no nothing worrying about you. No. Aviator's back on because <laughs> yeah, table. you're mirrored aviator. No, uh, non mirrored aviators, <laughs> just you... like Kim Kardashian, <laughs> just like Kim K. Guys, she did that. Do you guys know that she did this thing? Yeah, that she yeah. wore yeah. mirrored sunglasses in a... for a poker tournament. In a fucking yeah. poker tournament. I'm uh, starting so to he's... think it may have been a bit. Yeah, it has a bit. Uh, you sit uh, back at the table along with actually. Uh, as you head back to the table, uh, the Marquis is making his way, uh, and kind of like 
coming up behind you and clearing their throats. <clears> throat> uh, apologies that we haven't been able to speak this evening. Oh, is this Reyes? Yeah, you turn and you see Reyes. Uh, I'm not. Get him. I was so ready for Yasmir to be like, I'm sorry if we met. <laughs> yeah, I was ready for some, I was ready for some petty shit right there. Oh man. <sighs> it's been some time since um Tevinter, I believe. Yes, it has. And how is everyone doing? Oh, I do you know. Quite well, thank you. And my dear friend Carter. How is dear Brula? Healing up well, I hope. She should recover shortly. Good to hear. Best of luck in the tournament. I don't rely on luck. Good for you. And he, uh, nods and sort of in this brief passing moment, quiet conversation between the two of you, uh, he uh, moves to his seat uh, as the three of you sit at the table for uh, your for the next round. Uh, I think we can get through this one. Uh, maybe have time for another another break, or at least one more break action. See what Venom's getting up to. Uh, okay, so target number for this one is a 22. Okay. Um, We're going to the... have to play this a bit. What? Well, Garrus, what's your exciting. bonus? Well, I got two bonus plus you... one bonuses. Okay. Okay. The ante for this is four, so you go from twenty or from thirty-one down to twenty-seven okay. in fortune. Everyone ante's up, the cards are dealt, and the next round begins. Uh, so first in opening, read or calculate. Gotta read. Okay. Right. Um... How confident do you feel about it? I mean, my empathy is a plus seven. I mean, I could give I could give you the plus one just to get you started. Sure, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. I don't think this round is gonna be as long uh, because I don't want to risk it, and we have a decent pot going. Mm. Um, so yeah, we'll go for a read. Quick and dirty. Quick and dirty. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's a good. Um, 15 plus 7, 22, 23 with Garrus's 23. help. 23 succeeds, which gives you, what'd you get on the dragon die? Six. All right, you get <laughs> a six bonus on your bluff test, uh, on your next bluff test. Uh, as the opening, again, two people at the table, both of which are very focused on what they're doing. Um, you can see uh, Valmont is still kind of like, you can see he's a little shaken, uh, is still kind of straightening a bit as the uh, as the cards begin. But he seems, again, very focused on like the game. Like everything else is for after. Like he's enjoying the game, uh, win or lose. Uh, Reyes uh, is... You can see, like, looks at his hand and uh, glances over towards you. And you get a pretty read that, like, he's very focused on you this round. Um, the uh, With that, we move on to uh, round two uh, for draw, cheat, or pass. I gotta cheat, y'all. I, I do gotta cheat. Right. I always gotta cheat. Before you do, I need you to make a willpower self-discipline test. <gasps> Son of a bitch! And you have a minus one penalty on this. <gasps> well, I have you're... a plus two to it. You're a tower of will. Oh, tower of will! You're a tower, tower of will. will. Okay, so it's only a plus... Well, I have a plus four, so... This okay. motherfucker's trying some magic jamma? He's trying some magic jamma jamma. 
Yeah, That's your Kunari, cheating. Your Kunari uh, bloodline sort of interfering with this a bit. Yes, me just to be like, bitch, I'm Kunari. I'm built different. She's built different. Yeah. 18. Oh. He ended at 23. Bleh. This uh, is actual cheating. Reyes is very skilled. Uh, at cheating! Uh, at, at cheating. Yeah. You feel pain. No, no source. No immediate, like, it's not like, you know, pain in a specific part. It's just pain. Uh, that you try your best power, but it's like it starts slowly at first and then just like builds and it begins to like distract you in like in drawing focus away from it as you just like like doing your best to remain composure, but just pain starts to uh rack through your body. Um, as a spell takes effect, uh, you have a minus three to all checks until this ends balls all right so here's what's uh, i'm definitely giving you my plus one on this roll i'm gonna let you get uh, a plus six on your next bluff right yes. so we gotta we gotta try to set you up to as close to the end as possible yeah. yeah um yeah so you can add the plus one to cheat here um i don't even know I, if i want to go to bluff i might just check and get out of this because i have a yeah. plus three right now I have my minus three right now like i Check. I don't know if we're gonna make it. Get I think I'm gonna have to check. Deal yeah. With yeah. It. I am gonna still have you make the cheat uh okay. here. Um Alright, I'll take the plus one on the cheat. So it's minus two then. Yeah, just minus two. So essentially I am rolling a with the ledger domain, I'm rolling a plus seven. Okay. Fuck you, asshole! Stunted plus seven plus one twenty two on the fucking dot with the minus three with the minus three. Let's go. Uh, what'd you get on the dragon die? Five. All right, and we are checking and getting the fuck out of here because my stomach hurts. <laughs> uh. As the, I was so uh, worried that you got poisoned. Yeah, I was worried. As the pain takes effect, uh, you quickly take your cards. You uh, setting yourself up for this hand. Like I, again, we're flaming. This is like it's not a single hand. It's like multiple rounds. You're trying to uh, do your best to hang on. You you draw a few extra cards where you can. Uh, really trying to like focus in on on just your cards in your hand and getting through this round. Um, uh, Reyes makes a few like more aggressive plays uh, as a result, uh, trying to take advantage of this. Um, so, in uh, you move on to round three uh, with the betting, you decide to just check. Yes. Okay. I so. did get plus five. Uh, I did get five to uh, uh, on stunts. So I'll just take that additional. What's it called? Uh, I'll take the palm and get an extra fortune in there as well. Okay. Uh, and yeah, again with the angel of death roll, uh, you are shooing success for this. Uh, so go ahead and just make your roll to see how much you get. <laughs> Stunted again. Stunting like crazy. Uh, 14 plus 33. <laughs> Reyes should meet some people with chronic pain and then get at us again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so would you go to Dragon Die? Six. Weak. Up to 39 fortune. Uh, the... As the rounds move on, aggressive uh, Reyes makes a few extra like aggressive plays. 
uh, isn't uh, isn't as careful as he should be. Uh, and even though you find yourself trying to wrap up this round as quickly as possible, uh, he uh, is not able to like with with the amount of lead that you had with your chips um, going into this. He's not able to make up the difference. He gives up a few hands, uh, and the uh, round ends uh, with Reyes being eliminated. Uh, and he kind of sits back in his chair uh, and says, well, uh, my congratulations to the two of you. Uh, best of luck in the final round. Uh, and I think he... just like doing this with her like fingernails digging into her palms. Yeah, it she hasn't just, stopped. Yeah, just looks up at him. Like uh, I said, I don't need luck. I suppose we'll see. And he gives a nod to both of you, and he adjourns to the table. Uh, Valmont stands and uh, moves around towards you, uh, and uh, and says, uh, as you stand, maybe a little shakily, but trying to to uh, uh, trying to push through it, says. Well, then I suppose we'll see how this last round goes. Um, you've played a very good game. And win or lose, I definitely have to consider your uh, participation in further tournaments. That is very kind of you, my lord. Do you know that... I don't play unless I intend to win. He uh, he doesn't respond. He gives a nod and he uh, excuses himself from your company. Yeah, Damn, mother a... motherfuckers a full ass to venture magister and still couldn't win. Get on our level. Uh, will scoop. Uh. Ziggy uh, to escort her to the bathroom and probably throw up from pain. Are you alright? What, what was that? Ask uh, your friend Reyes. Texas. Buckle down and you'll get through it. It doesn't get worse. It'll pass. I'm sorry. You did great out there. Let's just hope we can get this done fast. So, while uh, Yasmira and Ziggy are dealing with that, uh, Venom. Uh, you were, during the, we, fat, we rewind back to uh, before the, uh, the round, uh, as you had ducked out of sight, um, and you hear a commotion out in the main room uh, and hear the sound of uh, footsteps uh, leading into the kitchen. Uh, there is a door here that leads into the kitchen from this room, uh, again, for like serving directly to these like private events. Uh, so you hear a bit of commotion coming from that way uh, and it seems to be coming towards this room. Which room am I in again? <laughs> You're in this uh, this like conference room area, uh, so you could duck out to try to go to that office, but you hear right, something right, happening right. in here as well that's about to spill into here. Ooh. I replayed all of Dishonored recently, and I'm really tempted to just like hide under the table. I was about to say, is there a large potted f uh, fiddly fig? I, I'm certain you can hit man this room. somehow. You can hit man this. Mm. There is a table, a very big table you can hide under. Is that going to be my whole thing if I stay in here? You don't know. Depends a, on whether they stay in here. As a player. <laughs> Does the door open in or out of this room? Ooh, good question. Uh, so from the kitchens, uh, it would come in where it's like the, the they go both ways. Uh, mm. into the kitchen, wow, so. like me. <laughs> mm. uh, so... 
Yeah, it's again. I think you got to take a take a risk. You could duck out into the into the hallway, and you could overhear what was happening in here if you wanted to do that uh, instead of going to the table. But those are probably your two options. Okay. Here. How how far away is the this like office from? Oh, it's like right around the corner. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. If you go out in the hall. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna slip out the door. Okay. You slip out the door out into the hall. You can see the game beginning to happen. Like through again, they're like curtains kind of framing the the entryway into this hallway that leads to the bathrooms. Um, but uh, everybody seems to be pretty focused on the game right now. Um, you hear some like clapping and some conversation. Like his hands are won and lost. Uh, and the uh, but as you are kind of positioned here kind of at like a corner between where this door is and then this opening to this uh this conference room area um so like to your as your back is pressed against the wall to your right is the entryway leading to this conference room with a door that's been left kind of it was it was a jar when you came into it so i assume you left it ajar when yeah. you exited uh and then you have this closed door to your left bathrooms immediately across from you okay. across the hall um and uh, yeah, you hear some commotion from in there uh, as the doors in the kitchen open and you hear the voice of Roland uh, saying, listen, the, there's a misunderstanding. We can talk this out. Uh, and you hear uh, Doman's voice saying, you're going to be quiet now. The Marquis will deal with you later. Uh, and you hear footsteps like going across the room. Um, are you just holding where you are right now? Uh, with, where are the footsteps going? Uh, seem to be heading like, uh, like into the conference room. Uh, if you're waiting to hear what happens, uh, they don't appear to be coming toward. You don't hear them approaching this door. Okay. Um, instead, you hear them move to, uh, like, like moving across the room, and then you hear a the sound of something like sh like something being moved like like a followed by another uh, and some like footsteps you hear like kind of some echoing uh and then as roland continues to talk and be like no we really don't we can, we can talk about this I, listen uh whatever he's paying you i can pay uh and uh then you hear a as something closes and the voices are muffled or muted And there's no more footsteps. There's no... No, you don't hear anything after that. Shit. I don't want to get stuck alone in a secret tunnel, Dolman. All right, I tell you what. I'm still going to go for the office. Well, I'm going to use that couple of minutes to keep an ear out and see if anybody comes comes out, comes in or out of the conference room. Okay. So you're waiting. The game continues out there. You're hearing conversations. You're like leaned up against the wall at the end of this hallway. Um, as you wait for a long moment, a couple minutes pass. Nobody seems to return. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go for. I gotta go back into the conference room. Okay. Uh, that so sounded like secret tunnel. <laughs> so ignore. You're you're not gonna go for the locked door right now. You're gonna go for potentially secret tunnel. Um, yeah, if I have to choose. You can do both. It's just gonna take you longer. Well, I don't know how much time I have left. I keep asking you, and you say you don't know. <laughs> I mean, I would say based on each round that has transpired so far you probably have about like 20 30 minutes or so um okay. office won't take me that long 
Okay, yeah. I'll while I'm waiting, while I'm listening, I'll try to pop the lock on the office door. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make your dexterity lock pick. Which I have a focus in temporarily. Okay. Should really get that one at some point. Ooh. Uh. Twenty. Twenty. Okay. With two stunt points. Uh. With two stunt points. All right. You are able to uh, you kind of move over to the door. I don't think you fully like kneel down in front of it because you're wanting to be, you know, just in case somebody comes down the hall. Uh, you sort of position yourself next to the door nonchalantly. Break out your uh, lock picking tools. Uh, fiddle with it for a bit. And then click. And I call this a speedy search with my two stunt points. Yes. Half the time. Uh yeah, you uh, you quickly fold into the room, closing the door behind you. Uh, and yeah, in here is a, um, a well-appointed office, uh, big desk, bookshelves. Um, there's a couple of paintings on the walls of like scenic or lesion uh, vistas, uh, and a very organized desk. Uh, in front of you, it's not like covered in paperwork and stuff. It seems like uh, there's like a kind of a simple ledger that's sitting on the uh, uh, like the center of it, and then uh, the a couple of drawers as well. <clears throat> I'm going to very quickly poke around. I'll flip through the ledger, just seeing if it's just like normal stuff. Okay, uh, poke around. Look Look behind the paintings, locked drawers, books that look out of place. Let's do a perception searching. And again, you get to do this really quickly. Uh, yeah. Baby search. Uh, let's see. 18. 18. Okay. Uh, you uh, flip through the ledger really quickly. This does not seem to be like the meat and potatoes of this. Like this is very clearly, it's like, you know, uh, very clearly a, a ledger keeping track of the business of the uh, sweet song, Brandy. That's Parley. for the tax uh, man. Yeah. There's a lot of like, boy, does this place make a lot of money. Uh, like <laughs> you think, like you've probably seen Yasmira do like the, the records for the Red Jenny. Like this place is like, exponentially more than than what the red jenny makes yeah. um uh just on like legitimate income but yeah uh, they can put up a hundred thousand silver just for fun mm -hmm. um so you uh you you kind of search that that's probably not gonna get you anywhere you begin to look through drawers uh look at the desk um there's not a lot in here not a lot of like personal uh like correspondence or anything like again very professional very neat very organized very clean um but as you as you search through some of the desks uh you find uh one of the uh, one of the drawers you pull it out and it doesn't come out quite as far as you would expect it to kind of like feels a little stuck uh and as you kind of mess with it there's there's like a few little things in here um like a uh like a like a wax like a seal kit and stuff uh uh as you kind of root through it uh you find that there is like a false back to this drawer um you're able to slide it out of place and the drawer slides out revealing a hidden like compartment at the back of it uh, as you uh, you open the or inside this uh, compartment is a uh, a small bundle of like documents 
um, kind of like tied up like a leather string or a leather, leather strap. Uh, and it seems to be like, as you kind of flip over it, looks like a bunch of like correspondence. Any names? Uh, yeah, you, um, actually you kind of like flip through it. And again, you don't have time to like read all of this right now, but as you're flipping through it, it's like different people, dates, everything. Like this is not like correspondence from like one person. It is all addressed to the marquee. Um, but it is, uh, they are well like written, like scripted, uh, letters and documents, uh, all addressed to the marquee that, uh, come from a variety of like important people, some of which you do recognize the names of as people that are in this very parlor. Um, and a lot of it, uh, again, just from like skimming through, it's like a it's like them agreeing to things. It's like it, you, there's a lot of like, you know. And like as per your request I accept on the terms that you offered uh, or countering on other terms uh, to like lots of stuff like that okay I'm taking them okay you take those pocket them put everything back where it was no secret doors in here though no secret doors in here. Right, back to the conference room we go. Okay, you duck out, closing the door behind you, head over to the conference room, uh, and yeah, there's, as you head into the room, there's no one in here. Okay. I had sort of a sense of, like, which direction Dolman was mm -hmm. going, so I'm gonna yeah. try to look around and uh, do Find another triggered. Do another perception searching uh, test. I will give you a plus one bonus on this uh, for your uh, because the information you got before. Ooh. Nineteen with six stunt points. Very nice. Uh, okay. Uh, 19 with six stun points. I keep closing uh, out of the stunts like I'm not going to need it again. You search over this wall, uh, kind of the back of the room. Uh, and as you do, uh, it's like, you know, like paneled wall with some like wallpaper, uh, across it. It's like dark, very like elegant looking like red uh wallpaper like flicks of like golden uh like uh vines through it um kind of matching everything else in this room um but as you move through it and kind of like knocking like very quietly on it to see if you like hear any uh like the sound you do catch more of an echo in one panel uh near like the back corner uh and as you note this, kind of feel along the edge, the, the panels of it, and you find a panel that moves just slightly, you push it inward. As you do, the wall feels like you can shift too, and there's a, like a grinding noise as the, you push it forward. Uh, and beyond this wall, you see a dark stone stairway uh, that kind of loops yeah, like a gentle like a, a gentle curve uh, to your right uh, and out of sight. Can I use my stone points? Yeah. So I had six, so I'm gonna call two for speedy search again. Okay. So you're testing half the time. Um, and I'm also gonna do resources at hand again. Um, and I'm going to give myself um uh give myself a focus and perception hearing okay uh with your perception hearing uh yeah you um 
You have this passage in front of you. Do you want to head down into it? Yeah. Okay. You uh, so slink, quietly. slink down, I assume, closing the secret door behind <laughs> you. Uh, close it. Uh, you see there does appear to be like a latch on this side. Uh, that's what you activated uh, from the other. Uh, as you close it, kind of clicks into place, the wall like moving back to its original position. Uh, and you descend down the steps. They curve uh, slightly, as I said before, uh, kind of rounding as they hit the bottom of this landing. Um, and you can see some flickering light at the bottom of it from probably a lamp or, or something else that is kind of beyond as casting light into the stairwell, uh, which is otherwise dark. Hear anybody down there? Uh, make a uh, make a perception hearing test. Whoa, really? Yeah. Oh no. Throw a dice a little bit. Eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, you. Uh, you hear kind of faintly, it's echoing through the, um, through the, off the stone. Um, you hear a, uh, a few things. Uh, one, you hear water, um, like the way everything's echoing. Yes, there's some sort of like pool or something beyond there. Um, and you also hear the sound of like a like a clang of like a metal door shutting uh, beyond. Uh, and well, no, actually, you don't hear that. Uh, I'd say you hear some like rattling of uh, like chains against stone, like metal against stone. Um, no voices. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you hear. Uh, you hear the the voice of uh, Roland uh, kind of echoing through his again. It's very muffled. Like, it's, it's hard to make out with, like, the echoes and the acoustics down here. Uh, but you uh, hear kind of just faintly his voice being like, is this, is this really necessary? It was, it was a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a misunderstanding that, uh, I, I mean, I, just let me if I could speak with them um, just just briefly I'm, I'm sure we could we could work something out uh, but you don't hear any response in return I assume Dolman is still down here I guess I'm gonna creep to the bottom of the stairs and see if there's anywhere I can hide okay uh I realize I should change the music just a little bit just to end on um you creep down to the following the bottom steps you hear this uh the pleading of Roland uh as you move into this room uh at the bottom of the steps uh and you've gone down like it, they're pretty steep decline like you've probably gone down about like 50 feet beneath the bottom of the uh the tavern um and you can confirm that as you as you walk in and you see a, a large space uh uh probably about you know what would be above ground maybe like a two-story stretch um carved out down here like a basement that has then been like expanded downward um you see a uh at your eye level as you reach the bottom um a stone walkway or a, like a, a stone floor uh, that kind of recedes into a walkway to a short, um, basically a canal uh, waterway uh, that a uh, there's like a boat that is resting in it, um, not like a large one, like a small rowboat. Um, there's some crates and things like around the side, things that might have been offloaded from it at some point. Um, and uh, that waterway dead ends at like a, a gate 
um, at the other side uh, that looks like it has a winch and a lever uh, and some chains that can be used to like raise and lower it. Um, that probably heads out like this one you're looking at probably heads out like underneath like the fountain square and uh, somewhere into Valrio, like either the sewer system or right into the canals. Uh, hard to say, but definitely looks like a smuggler's kind of den down here. Um, there is above you another walkway, uh, like uh, almost like a balcony that kind of like move, goes around in a circle. Like there's an upper level to this uh, subterranean space. Um, and there's some light from, uh, some oil lamps that are positioned that's like casting light both down from above and some that are down here too. But there's a lot of shadow and, uh, you're able to make the most use of that. Uh, you hear the, uh, voice of, uh, uh, Roland coming from somewhere off to your left as you reach the bottom of the stairs. Um, it's not like, I mean, he's not talking constantly, but it, it seems like as he is occasionally like piping back up to speak to you assumed Doman, uh, it, it seems to be coming from that direction. Okay, I'm gonna stay in the shadows and I'm gonna very slowly make my way around and see if I can see what's happening. All right. I'm going to have you make one more check. Uh, we're going to call this a uh, dexterity stealth. Oh. The one I'm best at. Okay. 22. 22. Uh, you, um, you move down this, uh, like the side of this, this wall. Uh, there's some more crates and, and things like stacked up here. Um, some of which appear to be open, have like bottles in them. Uh, others appear um, to be still like sealed. Some are like locked like chests instead. There's all sorts of stuff that seems to be like collected down here and organized and like put off to the sides. Um, as you uh, as you're moving around the edges though, you begin to hear some like other noise um that it catches your uh attention as well from above you uh and it seems like you can see a bit more light coming out of there and some faint uh now that you're at a better angle for it you hear some fake conversation of some people on uh that appear to be in some sort of room off to the upper side of this and it sounds like your muffled conversation of like maybe like a dozen people uh chatting up there and like kind of la you hear a bit of like laughter and then some more conversation as well um as you're uh kind of moving off to the left though and you reach the uh this like a small corridor that abuts a, a door that's partially opened um you uh can catch a bit of light coming from down that hall uh where you can i'll say like faintly through like the cracked door uh even at this distance with your elven eyes uh you're able to see uh some sort of like cell in there like there's like uh some um this the door itself seems to be pretty well reinforced uh and the uh that was partially opened uh you can see inside some like manacles that are like anchored into the walls and kind of sitting uh with like one hand up like manacled uh and just like looking very like still very drunk and very frustrated uh is roland that is like addressing somebody that uh, to our vantage point would be standing like directly to the left of the door uh from like if you were to walk in um he doesn't seem to notice you but uh he's kind of like addressing somebody in that way uh and just like are you just gonna stand there Let's... come on man we don't have to do this uh and you just i get no response from you assume domen 
Off to your right, though, you catch something else. There's a light source coming from a door a little bit further down, like past this this corridor. And you just see like a streak of like red light that is emanating from like the crack underneath that door. I gotta go peek. Although I think I know what it is. You move over to the store. Just tiny bit. Walk up to it, like peek through the keyhole uh, at it. Uh, as you peer in through, that red light hits you. And you can faintly, like in the back of your mind, begin to hear a like, this like melodic, note as you look in you see uh, glowing from like a table on the far side with like a jeweler's kit uh, and crates upon crates of red lyrium But also, as you kind of adjust your position, you look up and you see a, there's like a a basin uh, that's sitting at the, uh, kind of like off to the right near the center of the room. You see like drip, drip, drip down to the basin. As you look up, you see suspended from chains with a just lacerations across its body. Uh, you see the sort of exsanguinated corpse of a uh, of a dark spot. And with all of that and the weight of that hitting you, that's where we're going to end our session for tonight. God, this motherfucker's yeah, running up fucking, fucking red lyrium smuggling ring underneath this freaking club and exsanguinating uh dark spawn so yeah. that the silence kids can just poison everyone yeah no, they're running a fucking dark spawn factory mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah fuck uh, i like my gut was telling me that it had something to do with it we were going to find something involved with the dark spawn down there. Of course. Like I, if it, if it wasn't like an active like dark spawn, it was something they were using a dark spawn for something. Because there's no reason the silent folk would be here if there's nope. no dark spawn. There, there would be no nope. reason at all. Oh fuck. Mm. And unless, I guess, okay. And we don't we don't know exactly where Brila and Faye are. Although they could Brilla's be the people here. that could be in the, yeah, mm. you got a mage Faye, on their though, side. Is, but Faye is know. probably the one who is making sure things are still because Dolman is obviously running security. So Faye might be the one handling things down down in his, down here. Yeah, obviously none of us were there to for what you described. But did I? I kind of missed. Did you say how many voices? Been heard from I, that other room. I said around, like it sounded like probably around a dozen, like oh, voices of like chattering. Yeah. There has That's to be a like lot. a full operation. That's we a have lot we of have a full operation going on down here. Yeah, because it can't Great. just be them. It can't just be them. It has to be some kind of bigger operation. Especially with could Roland be. saying that like he got screwed out of some deal. They could be recruiting. Yeah. 
we've been working on spreading our uh, uh, resources and connections. There's no reason to think they wouldn't be doing the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And they are now using Valmont as their resource for whatever they want to do. I love the theories. And I don't think Valmont is aware. That's uh, what I think. I don't think he's fully I think aware. his face is very punchable. So is his oh, no, voice. Totally I, I love every time I hear him talk. So I don't think Rrr. he's going to allow them to take up a full operation yeah. of Red Lyrium and Darkspawn in his the basement mm-hmm. of his club yeah, without does... being fully aware. Yeah. Yeah. Hell, that's probably why he wanted us to help his cousin probably. over on the party lines because he could pick up some fucking dark spawn or dark spawn accoutrement probably, or whatever. Because where did he get this dark spawn corpse like this? You know, yeah. The only and the only known like recent huge dark spawn incursion was what happened when we were at the front. That was the most recent one. There has been no that we know of at least. There has been no other dark spawn incursions. So, so the one thing that we thought maybe redeemed him a little bit was just him picking up uh groceries. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. He cool, knows. Cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. cool, 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 cool. Oh no, he absolutely Yeah, knows. he totally knows. He's known he from the beginning. Know. Sorry, I was listening. He knows. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> has to know. Oh, he fucking knows. Well, yeah. we'll have to find out when y'all uh, oh, boy. eventually confront him. Uh, so confront is a very is a strong word. soft word. Honestly, that's a very kind word to use <laughs> for this. We'll have to see. Uh, well, that is going to be it for our session tonight. So let's go ahead and do our stars and wishes, and uh, yeah, yeah. we'll uh, end it there. Who wants to go first? I've got mine. Go for. It. Uh, cause my star is gonna go to Ziggy. Ziggy and the intimidation play, um, was very good. And I liked it. He went harder than I was expecting. Um, it went harder than I was expecting. And... I forgot what the fuck I was gonna <laughs> yeah. say and just went with it. Just kind of went with it. And, uh, it was, it was effective and it was fun to see Ziggy kind of be like, listen, motherfucker. I thought that I was muted during that and was not, and I apologize <laughs> for anything that I said because I'm pretty sure I was like, "Whoa, goddamn!" So yeah, it was that really was good. that was I thought I was muted. So it was it was extremely good. Yeah, loved it. Loved the whole thing. Uh, my wish. You know what? My wish is all. Uh, What's his name? Maldano? I was like, he wanted to call him Roy. Maldonado. Oh, Roy Maldano. Uh, Roy yep. Maldano. I... You might as well change it now, Val. Yeah, I know. That's, I... That's I'm gonna get his ass out of here. I wanna turn him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a good guy. <laughs> I wanna, he just got, he, I wanna he turn just got him. caught up with the wrong people, that's all. Well, no, he's a rich asshole. He's a rich asshole. He's a rich asshole. Probably yeah. very knew, knowingly knew what he was doing. But... And I wanna turn him. Yeah, we want to turn him. Let's yeah, get let's old, old Ray a, a redemption arc. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we could always, and we could always use outside funding, so there's that too. I'll say. Yeah, I mean, y'all are Red Jenny, known enemies of nobility, and you got a lot of you got a lot of nobles in here, and you can maybe fuck over. A lot over, of people so. yeah. don't like us. I want to give him. I want to give him a chance to tell us what he knows. Yeah. yeah. We'll We're also about to be a hundred thousand silver richer. Yeah. I don't think this motherfucker don't even care about the money. I, I don't care. I'm still stole, taking his. Even if we stole it, he would he'd be like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, he'd take have it eight personally. more of those. <laughs> yeah. He would take it personally, uh, because he's that kind of person. But yeah, I wanna I'm trying to give old Maldonado here okay. a uh, an out. And I see think, who he's willing to sell out for I his think life. That's very... It's very doable. Uh, we'll have to see how things go. Uh, awesome. Star and Wish, thank you, Van. Who wants to go next? I'll go next. Um, my star it goes to Yasmira's power play of how she reacted to Reyes. Of because it was it was the same thing of like, oh, I thought she was gonna say something. Do I know you? No, it was like, oh, hell, it was this real petty, oh, hello there, like pettiness that I really liked. I mean, it did cause us to or him to use magic on us, but look, hey, 
That gets that us. That bitch so- was gonna do it anyway. Yeah, you yeah, kidding we, me? We, we knew it was, we knew you were gonna cheat anyway. You just now fell into our trap. We you aggressed us. So in other words, hey, we're totally in the clear with this. But I am. Yes, Mira's almost seven feet tall. You think she yeah. doesn't already have chronically bad knees? Come on <laughs> now. She's been dealing with that shit already. Yeah. But I just really liked that. It. it was such a it was such a good power play that Yasmir did. I really liked it because we were all wondering how uh, how Reyes would react was, especially when he asked him. He asked her about Carter, and she just turned around and says, "Oh, how's Briella?" That was just really good. I I really liked that. Um, my wish though. Uh, I I I. I really, I, I feel like it's going to happen no matter what, but Dolan is going to yoke Garrus out of a room eventually, from because of either what Mal, well, either what Mal, like Roland tells Dolan, like, hey, yeah, this guy told this to me, or if Dolan kind of like puts two and two together, Dolan is going to grab this, grab Garrus by the collar and just pull him out the room, and I feel like. <laughs> I just want this like round two to happen in the most like okay we're doing it right now all right kind of moment so yeah I I want Garrus to have his round two with Dolan so bad I'm just I'm just seeing hot fuzz where Michael the 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 the, yeah. the cart boy just yeah. grabs him and throws him inside yeah. I, so that's why I totally picture yo yeah I totally picture just Dolan just grabbing Garrus and just. Ch- Fucking him into a room or something like that. I, I'm, I'm expecting it. I'm one hundred percent expecting it. I think we'll see. Yeah. So if y'all don't don't attack them first, I mm-hmm. think it's a. We are pretty much. We're pretty much right setting it up. To give them reasons to come after us. Yeah. We're being. We're purposely kind of like. I. I don't know if like everyone else is on the same page, but I know for me, I am purposely trying to get them. To be pissed off at us, so they make their first move. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's about yeah. to take all their money. So that's that's that. like been my modus operandi. Is like, no, we're not going to attack them. Let them attack. Give them a reason to just like fuck you guys. We're doing this right now, <laughs> and it's getting there. I feel like it's getting there, and I am really excited to see how it plays out. Me too. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Wally. Who's next? So. Oh. Uh, Star's gonna go to Ven for sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Very, very good. Very, very good. I told um, you guys I'd handle it. <laughs> I got this. We, 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 we trust Ven. We trust Ven. I haven't planned Dishonored all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no longer Hitman. I'm now Corvo Atano. <laughs> I no longer have Piano Wire. I have Rats. Uh, no, hey, you know, we, we, we're, we're doing what we're good at, and when, when your shadow has to play poker, we send our man in. <laughs> Sometimes the twink has to step in. <laughs> I had no idea that you didn't have a uh, focus and uh, lockpick. Never have, baby. Yeah. I, I could have sworn you did. I, I, that I, is high awesome. dexterity and yeah. pure fucking luck. It's because we all yeah. have that ability that we never trained just our like lockpicking. So mm-hmm. rogues do have the thing. If if we fail, we can yeah. re-roll. We can always re-roll. So it's never been like a bad situation for us. We're like, okay, we can always re-roll it kind of thing. But we've mm-hmm. never, yeah. Yeah, never took it. The, honestly, at this point, don't plan on yeah, when you have a dexterity of 87. You know, <laughs> my dexterity is six. It's just that my stealth is also four. Mm. So plus yeah. 10 to stealth. Hell yeah. Oh, my wish. Um, I would really like to have a conversation with Lady Richelieu. I think it would be very fun for Yaz to have a very pointed conversation with Rachel. Now that she's uh, terrified of eating or drinking anything this <laughs> evening. So, it could yeah. be very fun. 
Uh, I, I, y'all definitely set yourselves up for a good opportunity for that. So, hundred percent. Uh, yeah, That's she's me. freaked the hell out. Uh, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> That's not one thing I wanted to accomplish today. I've been thinking about it for a week. <laughs> and you did it. Mm -hmm. And it was good. Uh, awesome. Uh, Sita, I think you're yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I got to give a little bonus star out to Yasmira first. Because uh, I, I didn't know exactly how the... Uh, uh, hey, I, I'm going to tag along with you for my social things. Uh, the, the, the kind of interaction of uh, Ziggy and Yasmira was going to go, but fucking natural. Super nice. But big star uh, to Garrus for um, fucking with uh, our Ferelden friend and getting him to uh, uh, pop uh, the marquee in the face. And I, and I love that. Like, you should send a message. Like, I love that. <laughs> We gotta stick together. You should send a message. Tell them not to fuck with us. That, that was good. I like that a lot. Dance, my puppets. Dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, you're really tall, and I forget that sometimes. And, yeah, I'm a whole six. Yeah. Six. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, um, that was a really star, just an observation. My wish uh, is going to be I would love. Um, so, in Ziggy's next round, he's definitely gonna go talk to Sunshine. Uh, and, uh, I would love it if, uh, they could have just kind of one of those, I, I don't, I hope that the conversation isn't entirely hostile, uh, because, uh, Ray and, and Ziggy were best friends for 20 years and they haven't really seen each other since that. That's not like there yeah. was like a, a giant falling out or anything. Yeah. Um, so it would be really nice if they could just kind of talk like friends for a minute before Ziggy says, okay, you got to stop this or I have to smash your brain in, you know? Yeah, I definitely think I, I would love to see that play out because I, that's, that's, I think there's a lot of stuff that they have like planned for in this event, but I don't think a conversation with Ziggy is something that anyone had on their, on their mind coming into this. So that would be really interesting. So, yeah. I'd definitely love to see if, if Ziggy decides to reveal himself to them, which they may have some inklings, but I guess we'll have to see. Uh, excellent. Is that everyone? Are you good? All right. Well, that's going to be it, y'all. Uh, so, I believe we're good for next Monday, right? I don't think we have anything going on. I think we're... Yeah. We're going to keep trucking along. So uh, if you liked what you saw here today, join us next Monday for the next episode of Red Jenny. In the meantime, uh, join us on Saturday for the next installment of our Queer Chronicles of the Strixhaven Quartet uh, on uh, at 11 o'clock Eastern time uh, on Monday. I almost said 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. I was like, no. Fuck no. <laughs> hey, some of us watch it at 8 a.m. Some of not. us watch it at 8 a.m. Not 8 a.m. Eastern time. Saturday cartoons. Do you, uh, yeah. you want to watch it at 8 a.m. Eastern time, motherfucker? No, I'm, yeah. it's 8 a.m. for me. Congratulations. Yeah, you do not want to get up at 5 a.m. No, see no. to getting up at like 5 a.m. <laughs> to water 4 a.m. We, 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 we to appreciate it, but yeah. no. No, we're not doing that to you. Yeah. But uh, I'm not doing that. that to me. Fuck the rest no, of you guys. I'm, I not waking, sleep. I'm not waking up at 7 a.m. I'd have to wake up before 7. I have to wake up at 6 30. Like, uh -huh. bare minimum. No, yeah. No way. So, uh, joins for that. We have fought Cyclopses, Rakshasas, Purple Worms. I don't know what's on the docket next. All within the span <laughs> of like, I forgot days. about the Purple yeah. Worm. Well, there was, yeah. oh, don't forget the Sphinx. Purple don't forget the Sphinx. We didn't bite him. We did. We yeah. did encounter a Sphinx. <laughs> Yeah. Give us a play. So, I'm really excited sorry, to see what, what gets thrown out as next in this module because boy are some heavy hitters showing up. Shot coming out. Uh, I need to know what you motherfuckers sand. are going to do next. Uh, uh -huh. I think go find a secret vault and potentially a dragon. Hello. Just going to Azamar. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, join us for that on Saturday. Uh, but yeah, that's it. It's fun. Be
thanks everyone out there for watching. Uh, thank you to my lovely players, as always, for being enjoyed to run this game for. Uh, we will see you all in one week. And until next time, good game and good night, Internet. Thank you.